Sorry, thank you for the follow. <laughs> for some reason, the Tiltify alert went off twice in a row on top of each other. The game is up. Hello everybody, my, my, my name is Markiplier. And today we're going to be playing uh, 30 more minutes of Life After Magic after my internet connection went out last night. We're going to have a lot of fun doing a second playthrough, but only 30 minutes of it, because then I have to spin the wheel. Uh... Anything I'm missing? I don't think so. It feels like I'm forgetting something. Oh well. Uh. Now let's play the video game. Hopefully the Tiltify alert won't pop up again. Oh. The quick actions need to be refreshed. I'll turn stream bingo on again, in case anyone wants to play it. Let me move the game over a little. Okay, now. We can play, okay. I'm forgetting something. Hope not. <laughs> oh no, this is a. Uh... This is last game. Menu. What was my name again? Boo Boo. I think my name was Boo Boo. And then tab. Yep. Is there anything I can help with? I want to eat ice cream under my bed cheese and cry myself to sleep. Therefore, how much ice cream do we have left in the freezer? Not again. Come on. I wanted to make the pillow fort again and then eat ice cream in it. It comforts me to be in an isolated environment before I have to go to work. Boo boo. Eating ice cream for breakfast is really bad for you. And why is it so tasty then? Anyways, you're not the boss of me. Maybe so, but you know I'm right here. <sighs> toast it is. Well, I would have toast if my damn roommate would buy groceries once in a while. Looks like I'll need to skip breakfast again. Oh, now we're we're at Glamour Pop. The leaves. Calm leaves down. Didn't you had this one before? You got this. Remember what we say when things get tough? I am tough like spider silk. And that's the strongest thing ever. Arguably, the shell of a tortoise could be considered stronger if you take into account the... Please, concentrate. Wasn't something happening today? Oh, right. Please, today's the start of our promotion for that super special makeup line our manager has been bugging us about. I forgot about the three-minute ad break. <sighs> Kool-Aid. Delicious. gonna chill for three minutes while the ad break plays. Mm. 
So I was late earlier just because I was having trouble with Steam. Uh, Steam likes to do this thing where it says that you can have uh, Steam open on two uh, on two computers, but then when you try and stream one game to the other PC and you have a game playing on the other one, it'll just log your other computer out. It so I was fighting with it. But everything's okay now. Hopefully, when I uh, when I go and when I switch the game out, if we switch it, um, I won't run into the same problem because that'll be uh, heartbreaking. Uh, what else? The ad break ends. Twenty more seconds. I don't want to change my my name on Blue Sky. Blue, Blue Sky. Now we can continue. Please, today's the start of our promotion for that super special makeup line our manager has been bugging us about. They're bringing in a celebrity guest, remember? You did the taco hut chihuahua? No, it was Ara. Uh, defend magical girls, deflect. How about we defend magical girls? Magical girls do have their place in the fight. Without them, the distraction caused by the villains will be way worse. Wow, the old defensiveness has kicked in. Do I really even believe that? What was I doing all those years? Was I really helping or just causing more damage? Oh, I'm sorry. I've offended you and I didn't mean to. Maybe I was being overly harsh. You're entitled to your opinions. Who are you? I don't think about what you said. Ara looks baffled by the conversation. And now we're, uh... Oh yeah. Leeds was putting on the makeup in a silly way. Uh, get in Annalise's face, or what does that do? It's not very like the Sentinels to be so rude. Instead of anger, Annalise puts on a wicked smile. Quite the bold little thing you are. I like that. Whoa, Annalise, pretty intense. I guess the strange girl can stay. But Annalise turns to the manager. But you're fired. What? I must get to my next meeting. Ara, come along. Other stores are expecting us after all. And skip! You meet Jackie? Oh, really? Uh, I'm just supporting her. I mean, she's a friend that I want to be loving and supporting with. No, just. Oh, wait. I already did that one, I think. Biker girlfriend? It's not what you think. They're just my friends. Look, you can ask. Jackie stops mid sentence when Layla begins to mock her with kissy noises. Jackie claps her hand suddenly. Gee, would you look at the time, Layla? How about you finish the day off with some jump rope before your father gets here? Now we're talking to Miranda. I'd love to see what you're working on. Miranda blushes suddenly. Oh well, visit me at the workshop at the wood shop anytime. I can uh show you something I've been working on in my spare time. That sounds great. So that's almost everyone, but there's still someone missing. KJ. You look amazing. I'm not going to see what happened to you. Oh, thanks, princess. Uh. Magic does suck. Magic is important. Sure. It's a part of us. We have to see if there's something wrong to make sure everyone here will be keep keeping okay. We don't know the extent to how this will affect us. What if it doesn't stop at magic? I forgot to set the timer. My bad. It is my bad. How, how long have it? 
Um, hmm. How about I set the timer for 18 minutes? Okay, how about the other answer? Magic does suck, but it's a part of us. We have to see if there's something wrong to make sure everyone here will be keep will keep being okay. Mm, not all that different. Skipping? Oh, we got uh, got this. An older woman would appreciate lickable body glitter, diamond earrings. This novelty body glitter is all the rage. What is it now? It seems um. Really out there. Trust me, this stuff will make your anniversary a night to remember. Hmm. Drive a good sales pitch. Somehow that worked out. Scratches, scratches his little chin. I stroke under his chin and can tell he's starting to relax. He stretches out and then curls up to sleep. I admit, I was never your cat's biggest fan, but I do feel for him all pitiful like that. Miranda offers me the jacket on her oasis as a blanket, but I shake my head. The solaire comes. Uh, be, be direct. Solaire, why are you even here? I was getting to that, but first... No, now. Right, right, I'm on spirit hunting duty. What about the other answer? Be passive aggressive. Solaire, kind of in the middle of something. And I'd hate to waste your precious time doing whatever it is you are doing. Time with you is never a waste! But aren't you doing important soul card duty? Oh, and then it's the same thing. Uh, tell them you work here. But I work here? Let me through, I have rent to pay. <sighs> Wait, does that mean you can help us meet Aura? The fan grabs my wrist and stretches my arm out. And they scribble their number onto my skin. They yank me into the crowd behind them and with their luck, with their help, I'm able to make it to the front. Tell her to call me. Uh, sure. I showed the security cards my employee ID and they let me into the store. Jeez, what a hassle. I hope this number washes off easily. I rush into the store and enter the employees only section where I clock in just in the nick of time. Then R is there. Life's great. Everything is absolutely fantastic. Nothing but endless opportunities and personal fulfillment around here. R looks at you suspiciously like she's not even sure if you're joking. All right, if you say so. I wouldn't have expected you to end up working in a makeup store, but if you're happy here, that's all that matters, right? Although, who would have thought, after everything that happened, you'd be at such different places in our lives? We saved the world! But now I'm a superstar, and you're here. Express disappointed in Aura. To be honest, I'm disappointed in you. Excuse me? Well, someone has to say it. I pull her over to the side where hopefully no one overhears us and I use my best angry whisper. How could you exploit your magical girl past for fame like this? Using the Sentinels as a marketing tool for your own selfish gain? You didn't even ask us. The boy young I knew cared about us enough to do at least that. Are you kidding me? You're accusing me of not caring? You haven't given the team a second thought for years. I don't even remember how long it's been since I've heard from you. And now you're pretending to care because the magic is disappearing. That has nothing to do with- SHUT UP! I heard enough of this bullshit from KJ. I don't need it from you too. A significant portion of the profits from the sentimentality line is going to charity. Did you even think to ask about that? Or about how the Sentinels are public domain? How I might be able to keep our name clean if I'm involved? Of course you didn't. You think just because you used to be our leader of a group, you can keep telling us what to do without hearing us out. That's not fair. Don't tell me how to live my life. I'm not hurting anyone and I'm doing more for the world than you are. And I don't need your permission to do any of it. I can use my experiences however I want. And if you have a problem with that, fuck off. A staff member runs over, looking like she's about to clamp her hand over Aura's mouth. We still have cameras here, watch yourself. Our glance is, glares at you like it's your fault. Sorry, Tiff, it won't happen again. She storms off and I take a deep breath to try and calm down. I feel bad, but she needed to hear it anyways. It's not right to use her magical life for fame. I probably have to see her again soon. Hopefully she calms down by then. Welcome to Glamour Pop. Is there something I can help you with? Hi there. Have you heard of the idol, Ara? Ara's the best. I love her look. I'm going to her concert soon. I want her to notice me. What should I get? Huh. Ara probably like pink nail polish, juicy lip glaze, 
heavy dark eyeshadow. Maybe this lip glaze, it really plumps up your lips. Uh, so it make me look extra kissable? You think I have a chance? Wait, what? No, that's not what I... I'll take it! Miracles can happen! <laughs> hey, who am I gonna hang out with? Uh... How about Ara this time? Ah, yes. The wonderful smell of freshly ground coffee at, uh, 6 p.m. It sucks that I actually need it at this time if I want to do anything fun after work. Retail is so tiring. But I shouldn't think about that now. I can't take work home with me or I'll go insane. Now it's time for chic coffee shop girl vibes. Since it's later in the day, the cafe isn't too crowded, which is nice. I start to head to the barista, but in the corner of the cafe, I spot someone familiar. Yep, that's definitely R wearing a wig. She spots me at the same time that I see her and she glares at me. Maybe I should say something. If I don't, things might get even more awkward. Hey, Ara. Shh. Oh my god, how dumb are you? I'm in disguise. I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's that effective, but okay. Whatever. I'm going to be blunt. I don't really want to talk to you outside of team meetings. I'm going to help you fix the magic because it's important to me. But outside of that, I think it's better for us to keep some distance. I went a little overboard when we met at the makeup launch. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that some of the profits are going to charity, and I didn't know that the Sentinels are basically public domain. Remember the dolls of us? The shitty anime? I like the anime! Of course you did. You were the main character. Oh, we had this conversation before. Keep it professional. I agree. I don't want to let us fall back into our old habits. Right. I'm glad we're on the same page. It's definitely for the best. I'll see you at the next meeting then. See you then. Ara's gone by the time I get my coffee. It's sad that we couldn't see eye to eye, but hopefully she's mature enough to stay professional while we're working together again. I guess some things never change. Okay, that was not the good. Anyways, I know the makeup line is kind of messed up, but I didn't agree to this without thinking about it first. With me around, I can make sure the money is going to the right places, and I can make sure they don't slander our names. I see. Sorry for judging you so harshly. You could have just asked me about it before scolding me like I'm a child. I've always hated that about you. You never listened to what I had to say. I didn't realize you felt like that. Yeah, well, it's whatever now. So why did you become an idol? Ara takes a deep sigh. As Sentinels, we were symbols of hope and justice. We saved the entire world multiple times. After we all parted ways, I felt like I didn't have a purpose anymore. I felt useless and I didn't know what to do. All I had left was my singing. So when I got the opportunity to become an idol, I took it. I know you might not agree with my decision to create Aura from Sentinel Aurora. Keiji thinks I'm a sellout for it. But the Sentinels were the most important thing in the world to me. I want to incorporate that part of myself into my music. Sentinel Aurora is my identity, and I should be able to use it however I want to. I don't know if I agree still, but there have been plenty of times when we have disagreed and we moved past it. That's true. Ara smiles softly at me. And I think I can take that as confirmation that she accepts my apology. So, do you really think the wig isn't helping? I don't think blue is my color anyways. What do you think? He's her. You look dumb. Rude? I was thinking about trying out this hair color for my next album promotions, but maybe not. Is it really that bad? I can't believe you're still so easy to make fun of. I can't believe you're still so annoying. I missed you too. But that's not what I said. The cafe speaker start playing a new song. How about, let's see what the other option does. You look cute. I know. I just wanted to hear it from you. Did I dye my real hair this color? I've been thinking about it, but the pink color is so tied to the brand. I think you look pretty with any color. You don't have to keep complimenting me. It's getting suspicious. Before you ask, no, I can't get you backstage to see TTJ. No, you know that used to be my favorite. I need to confess my love to Tarani before it's too late. If you stay on my good side, I'll consider putting in a good word for you. But you should get rid of your poster before that. The kiss marks might freak her out. The cafe speaker start playing a new song. I recognize it immediately as one of our singles. It played on the radio constantly when it was released last summer. Ugh, I hate this song. Same, I wish they played some real music. An our song? It's people like her that are ruining what it means to be an artist. She really thinks that she's all that in a bag of chips. Ara isn't saying anything, but the look on her face tells me that she definitely hears them. Confront the aunties. I'll be right back. Huh? No, hey, hold on! I march over to the table where the two auntie fans are sitting. Hi there, I overheard you talking about Ara. Um, yeah? 
Are you a fan of hers or something? Yes, I am. And even if you aren't a fan, you shouldn't talk about her that way. Idols are humans too. You shouldn't trash talk them like that. Well, well, if she made better music, we wouldn't have anything to trash talk. You both snicker, but I'm not backing you down now. Do you have three hit singles? No, not even one? I didn't think so. This conversation is embarrassing, actually. If anyone can be ta trash talked, it's you. Oh my god, you're an obsessed fan, aren't you? It's crazy, let's just go. They side-eye me as they leave the cafe, and the employees are staring at me for causing such a scene. When I get back to R, I'm still fired up, and I sit back down at the table with a huff. People these days, jeez. She's still staring at me in shock. Can't believe you said that. Whoops, was that too much? <laughs> I can't either. Thanks for defending me like that, I appreciate it. I didn't think you cared that much. Hey, I've always cared. I think in the past we just cared in different ways. Hmm, maybe. When she smiled at me this time, it feels more genuine than before. There's something sweet and wistful about it. I think it's a prettier smile than the one she puts on for the cameras. Anyways, let me update you on what I found so far. We spent some time thinking about her theories. In the end, we only end up with more questions to answer and rabbit holes to explore. But it was nice to talk together. Okay, let's see what the other option does. Comfort her. Hey, don't listen. Oh, whoops. Hey, don't listen to them. Your music wouldn't be so popular if it wasn't good. You have so many fans who will love your music. No, it's... It's not... No, not, no one's ever... She can barely speak. Maybe she's never encountered a zealous anti-fan like this before. I don't know what to say to help her. Ara bites down on her lip. She looks like she could burst into tears. Let's get out of here, okay? Before she can respond, I grab her hand and quickly lead her out of the cafe. We don't stop t walking until we reach the park a few blocks away. Are you okay? Huh? I said, are you okay? Oh, right. I'm fine. Sorry, I... That was... Never mind, you wouldn't understand. I mean, I know I can't completely empathize with you in this situation, but I want to help you if I can. Appreciate it, but... It's not something you can help with. I'm gonna go home. Sorry about all this. I'll see you later, okay? I now I remember what I was miss what I was forgetting. To pin the donation link. That's it. You get it. Whoops. There it is. Go to the YouTube stream. Whoop! How dare you! Da, 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 da. Game looks interesting. It is interesting. For some reason, I'm not seeing. For some reason, I'm not seeing the um the messages from YouTube. Oh, it says YouTube's disconnected. Hold up. Why? Why is it disconnected? No, it's not. It's connected. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. Uh. I'll probably just have to pop out the YouTube chat. So that I can absolutely make sure that I'm seeing all the messages. Unless opening and closing and reopening streamer bot help. No, it still says that YouTube is disconnected. Huh. Weird. Okay, I'll just have YouTube chat open uh, separately. <laughs> me almost forgetting to pin the message there I think I'm going to go home sorry about all of this I'll see you later okay hey don't worry about it I'll see you later I didn't know that she's so sensitive about her music career maybe she needs some space to process this Ari gives me a weak bittersweet smile before she leaves I get the feeling there's something she's not telling me I wish she'd open up to me more she's okay Let's choose the other option, because this is sadder. 
confront the aunties. Who should I hang out with now? Um, let's go with Jackie. After calling ahead for the okay, I arrived at the park. Oh wait, I already read this one. He's Jackie over kissing, not your girlfriend. I'm not girlfriends, Jackie. I'm her. I thought I was your only love. My voice is dripping with sarcasm. Picking up on it, Jackie leans into it and plays along. I'm sorry, babe. It's not you, it's me. My heart has already been claimed. <gasps> By who? Jackie balls her fist up and crosses her heart with her other hand. With all the terrible dramatics that befit a low-budget soap opera, she answers, The ring. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm losing a boxing in this drama? You're right, babe. I see the light. You're the only knockout for me. Oh my god, that was so corny. True, but it made you smile. What more could I ask for? I feel silly letting her comment get to me, but leave it to Jackie to hit you where you least expect it. She's so smooth, like butter. M melted, melted butter? Butter. Okay, let me just... Okay. I'm not going to let her make any more cheesy lines in our made-up little drama. Instead, I point over to my convenient little topic changer, Layla. So is she always this easy? Sassy? Uh... What does this uh, option do? Jackie, you can't give up the power. It was meant for you. Alex had chose this for a reason. What? You're joking with me, right? No, I'm not. It's our responsibility, Jackie. More so now than ever. We need to step up if magic disappears on us. I'm going to help out this time, but I don't really want to continue after this. But why? Why not just hold on to it, just in case? Because if I do that, I'm going to get myself really hurt. What do you mean? Haven't I always been there to heal you? Jackie looked as though she wanted to say something, but decided against it. Instead, she grabs the wrist of her right arm and stares down at the ground. Oh. She smiled, but it didn't have the same warmth she always carried. Of course you do. Let's just clear up this mess with our powers, and then we can talk about it again, okay? No point in arguing the powers disappear anyways, right? Well, that's true. Well, it's getting late. We have to get back to the gym before Layla's father. Would you like me? Would you like some company for the walk back? Oh no, don't worry about it. I have plenty to talk to Layla about anyways. About things. Trading stuff, you know? Jackie felt a bit off, but I don't see any way of getting her to open up about it. She goes to pick up Layla, who seems surprised to be leaving so soon. We gave each other away, but it felt a bit awkward. Was this something I said? We're skipping. Um, better attitude. Maybe what you really need is a better attitude. What? No one cares what makeup you have on if you're rude. She flips me off and storms out. <laughs> uh, sequins. What about a nice sequin dress? That'll. What about a nice sequin dress? I'm sure that will make you shine. Um, isn't this a makeup store? Do you even sell clothes here? Well, no. Wow, thanks for being completely unhelpful. <laughs> Yeah, the, this is the obviously the answer. The body glitter. Let's go talk to Ara again. Oh! It's over, okay. Let's uh, spin the wheel now. That was a good point to stop. Uh, I like retro style g video games. Also, what's up? Hi, Ness! It is pretty cute. It's a nice uh, game. You sure all the characters are gay? is always nice i finished my first playthrough of it yesterday uh so i just had 30 more minutes left now i'm gonna spin the wheel let's uh let me spin the wheel which chat which which okay spin w Where's the wheel? Oh, maybe it's because it's all caps. Maybe that's the problem. Let me try it again. Oh, Don't Starve is the winner. Okay. I guess we're playing Don't Starve. Let's hope I don't get logged out of Steam. No one donated! No one donated. That's a lie.
Okay? Don't starve. I'm trying to hit stream. Not registering. Oh, because it still says it's running. Come on, Steam, update. I'm waiting for it to close. The game? It's not closing. <laughs> never played the game, but I heard it's pretty good and charming. It is! Uh, I never make it very far into it. But it is a very fun game. Come on, close. You know, yeah, you can still donate. Every $30, I spend a donation wheel. And that can, uh... And that can change what activity you do, including karaoke. But I was practicing singing earlier again. So I don't, uh... Make a fool of myself. I'm still waiting for the game to close by itself. What the fuck? Now Don't Starve is popping up. It better not have closed water though, though. Cause that'd be heartbreaking. Why? Things are just not working today, huh? Tw twice in a row. That's ridiculous. It was working fine yesterday. Three times? What is happening? What is happening with Tiltify? What is happening with StreamerBot? I'm closing it. I can't believe that happened four times. Okay, maybe if I, uh, if I restart. Ah, thank you for the $10. I don't know why it played the alert four times in a row. <laughs> Let's see, options. What a messy, messy stream it is so far. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do full, no, nah, not full screen. Let's just make the display larger. No? Oh, I can't, huh? The bot was probably very happy. <laughs> oh, it's happening again. I don't know why, but the extension just does not like me today. Okay, do I have the game audio up? Nope. I'm so glad Steam wasn't giving me problems though. Usually does. You can hear it now? Good. Okay, now we're gonna play Don't Start for three hours. Let me, uh, let me set the timer. 
If we hit another $20, uh, whoops, I forgot to, um, move the game capture. That's full screen. Um, if we hit another $20, and I'll spin the donation wheel, and there might be a chance we play Toontown or do karaoke. Whichever. Now. Cancel. Wait, what? What the hell? Uh, play mods. This mod has been disabled. Or mod. Oh shoot, never mind. I don't want to do that. I don't want to download anything. Let's play! Oh, uh, you can see all of my misadventures. Morgue. Days lived. 18. Cause of death, darkness. Mode survival. Uh, what's this? Oh, uh, do I want her? Oh, never mind. Character. Which one am I going to play? Not a picky eater. Is charged by lightning but damaged by water. Can upgrade with gears. The cryptic founder. Eureka! My destiny awaits! A great inventor. Nearsighted, delicate stomach. The Lonesome. Hello, friend. Plants relate to him. Has a green thumb. Food fills his stomach, but not his heart. Ah. Uh. I might go with the, uh, the bereaved. Abigail, I'm back. I'm not done playing with you. Is haunted by her twin sister. Feels comfortable in the dark. Doesn't hit very hard. Wolfgang! Want me to play Wolfgang? Which one is Wolfgang? Wormwood. Wagstaff. Wendy. Wolfgang! Oh, okay. Is afraid of monsters and the dark, though. I've never played the strongman before, so let's, let's do that. World. The standard don't starve experience. That's okay with me. Eep. Oh wait, now I can uh let me change the the information now for the stream. To reflect reality. While it's loading. Don't starve. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to need it. Game changed, don't starve. Oh, loading. I clicked it while it was loading and now it's uh, a little frozen. Please, 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 nothing happened, please. Please. Don't die. No, don't die! Ah, didn't I? Don't know what's gonna happen, but it starts off smooth. Yeah. Whoa! 
I've never been on this world before, actually. Hopkin can carry but doesn't want to. This bluebird. What is this? What is that? Walk to Pog. Salmon Pog. It's cute little food stealer. Oh no, it steals food? Pig and dung pile? Blech. Let's pick up the manure. Wolfkin is disgusted. Ew. What is this? What is that? I what I <laughs> I've never seen this world before. Let's get this radish. Exotic flower. Boulder. I need to cut some trees down. How do I make an axe? I need uh I need some rocks. What's this? It's strong, but not as strong as Wolfgang. Hey, if I can I can I pick up a rock? Are these rocks? No! No! They're chasing me! You're not as strong as Wolfgang! Ooh, what the fuck is that? Stop! Stop chasing me! Would you leave me alone? Fuck, you can't do anything these days. You can't take a fucking rock from the ground? You can't do anything because of woke. This is what wokeness does to you. Makes you chase after Wolfgang. Was just picking up a rock. I need, I, I need flint, actually. I need flint. That wasn't worth it. Poop. Yeah, poop. Those are so cute. I wonder how they taste. Where am I? God damn, I need food. I, I have two radishes. Oh no. Fucking rocks. I need flint. Ah! Who are you? Dental pig? Damn in Melbourne. Is like Wolfgang's piggy bank. True. It's a little racist to have a piggy bank, right? Because they're pig people. A little racist. You shouldn't do that. What? Why for art thou? What? What'd you say? Who are you? Walk to Alice. Hey, well, Alice. Wolfgang can sell him stuff. Come to shop, me have relics. Walk to townhouse. The fuck? There's a whole town here! This seems this seems really difficult actually. Let me save and quit. I say quit. Let's open up a different one. It's too, it's too different. That's not the don't starve I know. Man, but it has to load. That's the problem. Loading. Let's play a different one. Play. That was Hamlet. Being chased by enemies is pretty fun and scary. Yeah, for real. No. No, no. Neither. I want the regular world. Can't 
Michael. Oh, okay. I have to choose one of them, huh? Okay, this is regular don't stop. Oh! I dropped my fucking microphone again. How the hell? Okay, let's do regular don't starve. I think that's what the DS stands for. Fucking stop! Stop falling! This tree looks very angry. Maybe it has resting uh, tree face. Okay, this is the regular one. Yeah! You better find something to eat before night comes. No! This is not the character I want. Shit, not again. It's like, I load up a game and it's not the one I want. <laughs> I forgot to choose a character. I'm gonna choose Wendy this time. A little fire bug. Is she? I don't, I don't remember, actually. I haven't played this game in so long. Can't believe I've already restarted so many times already. Okay, don't starve. Shipwrecked? Sure. Character? Let's go with her, Wendy. Doesn't hit very hard. Oh, the other ones are from here. Okay, let's start. Finally. Let's finally start. Embiggeting his head. Oh, look at the face. Got the eyes. Eagle male. Chin, like the crimson chin. Yeah! Finally! Wendy! Let's pick flower. Classic, don't starve. Right here, folks. Now people won't fucking bother me. Saplings. Grass. Pray. Or flower. Don't eat. Don't scream at me. Pick <coughs> sapling. I need some flint. Where the fuck is the flint at? God damn. I make shit out in these woods. I'm in burrow. Down, down to the depths. Is that berries? Is that Flint? Yeah! Exactly what I wanted. Look at that. Yeah, that's how you fucking sound, bitch. Goofy ass bird. You look tasty. Hey, um, first, uh, pretty parasol. Cool. Red? I need some more flowers. It, oh! It's spider! You almost got
got me there. Fucking game. Okay. Oh, my microphone fell. Stop. Yeah, it is dark soon. I have a uh, it. Fucking spider, get the fuck out of here. Everything th dies is a sad thing for a small child, be saying. Okay. Ah, campfire. I've survived my first day. me. I'm trying to survive. Ah! Ah! This is a bad place to put my fire. Look, they're scared of the fire. You too. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I hear something else to the left. Someone's munching? What is that? Oh wait, I need to go back to my to my campfire. It's about to go out. You're calling bitch. <laughs> I still need- I still need some more... I still need some more flour. Flour. Okay, I need to save on my campfire, actually. Darkness is looming, you're right. Oh! It's- it's nighttime now. my patience. Science machine, I need one gold. And four rock. Um, bird trap, I need two twigs uh, and six cut grass. Pickaxe, hammer. Go away! Fucking nosy bitch. Eat some more seeds. 
You're fine. You're fine, Abigail. I mean, Wendy. Abigail's her dead sister. My bad. Daytime. Woo! Our first night! We survived! Oh, look, we got a flower. Know what that means? A beautiful flower crown to soothe our brain. Graveyard? Give a headstone. It's worse than it looks. Someday I will join you. Gold nugget! Oh my god! Look at these gold nuggets! Fuck oh, yeah! Look, I got really lucky, didn't I? What else do I need? Uh, kick ass. I need one more flint. Yeah, one more flint. Get some rocks. Sapling. Grass. Hungry. And a pickaxe. I'm gonna need. Ah, oh, Flint! Mother Love, right here! Oh my god, it's a giant bird. No, 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 no! Hold nugget. Ah! Ah! Evil flower? Pick up gnome? Pick up box thing. Uh. Beer! That's good. That's a good thing to have. Carry no more. Oh, that's a box thing. Whatever. Come back. Jump into a wormhole. Sure, run out. Bye bye. That flute noise. It's pretty good. Yeah. Where are we? Oh! It's a dude. to sleep. This. Examine plugs of ink call. But this isn't a good spot, probably. I mean, there's sinkholes. Oh, fairy bush. I'm full of emptiness. That is true. I haven't been feeding her. Pick up green mushroom. Where 
am I? There's so much words. I was hoping. Ah, spiders! Airy bush. Away! God damn it. Get alone. I'm trying to find a good place. Set my fire. I would hide too. I could. No. Hungry as fuck. I've been feeding her. Hopefully she doesn't die of starvation. Oh my god, they're screaming at me. Uh, it's gonna be dark soon. And in, uh, I just want a campfire, not a fire pit. Oh! Straw hat! Activate touch Well, let me eat this. Um, some berries. Cook some carrots. What you want, bitch? I'll fucking kill you. Tree morphed a little bit. What happens if I activate a touchstone? I'm a touchstone. A futile award. Three minute ad break for Twitch is starting. place in the hierarchy. Y'all are stronger than me. I'll be right back while the, the ad break is playing.
I'm back. Just uh, get some. Break should be over soon, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I break is finishing now. Good, okay. It was great to get about games like Don't Starve is that I can eat during them. Where? My. Right there. Uh. Let's check through the woods again. My chopper is about to die, though. There's so many evil flowers all over the place. How does a flower become evil? I'm trying to find uh, an area full of those beefaloes. any tracks yet. Investigate suspicious dirt pile. <gasps> Animal tracks! I've spoken into existence! They should be here somewhere. you oh you're a thief aren't you that for worm I have a spear right take a morsel I killed it you saw that I killed something this cool spear I picked up Glacier? Gold nugget. Gold nugget. I'm on top. Oh! Greedy. Look at me. I'm just picking up the gold nuggets. Almost got it. Oh, 
all these gold nuggets come from? They're just like flying all over the place. Oh shit. Need some grass. Where's the grass? Skeleton. Low dart? That sounds helpful. Need rocks. All I need are rocks. Woo! I can't pick that up. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Some more rocks. Grass? Sapling rocks. I'm racing against the clock here. Whoa, what happened to you? What happened to you? Oh. Uh Oh shit. No. Fuck. Rocks. Still fire pit. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Woo! Thank fucking God. No one donated. Eat this morsel. Ah, what happens? The my uh my alert for the for donations keeps going off randomly look at me i'm safe now i don't want to build my science machine here though Rabbit earmuffs. I need a new axe. Endothermic fire? This fire is from the opposite day. What, it makes you cold? That's interesting. I forgot to set the timer again. Hold up. Um, 41? What time is it now? Uh, it's been, what, like 36 minutes? 36 minutes, it's been 36 minutes. How do I do math? That is hard. Let's just go for two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, two hours, 30 minutes. 150 minutes. Okay, timer's up. <sighs> this got golden. Mm-hmm. It does. I am still trying to find the beefalo.
Uh huh. The fuck are they? I'll just continue going this way, I guess. Gotta avoid the birds. Hmm. What was I? What was I trying to do? Oh, I was trying to. There. I had. I just wanted to scroll down the chat. I swear to Christ. So many berries, but no beefalo. Where are my silly friends? I'll just go around the um the perimeter. Another day, another nickel. Oh, there's my old campfire. Ah, uh, she's trying to tell me that she's hungry. Don't worry, I'll feed you soon. I'm trying to find some silly friends, though. Uh. He's right, darkness will soon be here. Should probably get more wood. Uh, axe. Timber. The world is so small. And so too am I. I feel bad for some of these trees. They just do that. They just wither. Do I even have enough for a parasol? Oh, I need some flowers.
survival. Uh, one more flower. My god, it's almost night time! I need a flower! Right here! Ah. No, she's gonna die. She's gonna die. <laughs> it's been a good one. Okay, so I did just almost set the forest on fire. things have to be. go get my, uh, stuff I dropped, though. Who was I? Um. There's the wormhole. Uh. There. Who was I? Where did I die? Abigail, can you help me out here? I'm fucking lost. Man. All I needed to do was light another tree on fire. Now, you happen to know where I died? No? Okay. in a foresty area, right? Be here? Yeah, I think it was in this area. I was wondering where Abigail was at. She's right there. Well, that's a skeleton, but it's not my skeleton. Hmm. Huh. 
Some piece over here. Turn around, maybe. Let's go here. Go down. body I thought it'd be around here oh may maybe it is here actually I think maybe I'm close because there's a bunch of carrots here Darkness is calling me. I'm gonna fucking die again. I'm gonna find my body. It has all my things. This is not the right area. Got these silly trees. Fucking damn it. Ah! It's not my fault. Look, they're bees. And it's raining again. God damn it. Sapling. Axe. Campfire. I need some more grasses. That was use useless. Probably won't survive long. Fire. Have to keep it for the rain stop.
What's that? Oh. Fireflies. Maybe I'll be able to find my, my body a little bit. Seekers. I would never seek attention. No! No! Leave Abigail alone! Fuck you. That's my little sister, asshole. Or maybe she's my older sister? Well, anyway, asshole. Hey, I defeated a monster with an axe, though. That's pretty cool. Now, if only I knew where my fucking body was. I'm getting further and further away from it. Animal tracks? Animal tracks. Might not be all that bad if I manage to find the beefalo, though. I'm gonna be here living one day at a time, huh? Look, it's someone's farm. Holy shit. What a find. Now it's my farm. Like a potato thing. What a hideous creation. However, I am still seeking my body and the beefalo. Even though I'm definitely getting further and further away from it. Now I'll walk back. Go into the wormhole. Maybe that'll help. No, it won't. <sighs> Abigail, can you please help me? The loss. Dropped all my shit when I died. I can't find it. Get the berries. Let's get the forage. Got some flint. Some more berries. Damn it. Ah, it's evening now. I still haven't located my body.
find myself on the opposite side of the world. So oh, sad. Rabbit. Well, I've been here. Definitely. This is my path of destruction. You know, I didn't process it, but it is really funny that the monster was attacking Abigail. Like, can she... She can't suffer damage, right? Like, why go after Abigail? All you did was make it easier for me to kill you. What? Play over from my body. That's so many cool things. Yes, I know that you're hungry. But if we can't find our body, then what's the point? We had so many cool things. Let's see, I'm demon. Killing me so. No remorse. Confronting me with death. Really rude. Oh shit. What's dark again? I have no grass. I can make a torch and just set the forest on fire again. First, I need a sapling. Oh, it's dark now. Hey, Abigail. Pretty light. Abigail. I'll just follow. Oh, no, Abigail! Don't do that! Abigail, stop! this game, Al Abigail, that you're playing with me right now. Who needs a fire when you have a dead sister? My only light in the darkness. Abigail, no! Oh, look at my brain. Look at my brain. I'm about to go insane. Literally. Actually insane. Surviving the night while following your sister's light? Not good for your mental health. Take note of that. Ooh. 
awkward. I can't find my body again. I've been going around for two days. At this point, it's looking like I'm never gonna find it. Come die of starvation. You know what? Good for her. This is the sunk cost fallacy. But like at the the weirdest extreme. Maybe when I die and I respawn. I'll be able to, uh, to find the beefalo this time. I'm just gonna chop down some trees. Abigail, I shall soon join you in death. Snackaroonie! Okay, starting off the day fresh. And some flowers, some grass. I need some flint. This time, I will not be defeated. Woo! <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> are looking good right now. Okay. I need rocks. Logs. Whoa! Did I just kill? <laughs> I killed the butterfly. I thought it was a bird. My bad. And music of the butterfly. Okay, let's go activate this touchstone.
Bebelo? Bebelo? We got rabbits. No? Don't Starve is teasing me right now. If I'm gonna settle down, I need to- I need to be near the poopers. nuggets. I'm sensing birds. All birds. It'll be dark soon. What is this? Melted mini glacier. Okay. Activate Maxwell's door. Whoa, not yet. That sounds cool though. I need to be able to, uh, to survive one world first, though, I think. Oh. Most dark out. Oh. Got my flower crown. just to wait it out. I'm gonna cook all the berries. not eat the petals. Ah! Night's almost over. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I don't know what you mean, Duolingo.
Let's just go around the perimeter. See if we can, uh... Find... Rock. Uh, maybe a plane full of wonderful buffalo creatures. What is this? Pick up eye bones? Eye bones. Looking into my soul. Oh, it's a Chester! Hey, Chester! Here, have an eye bone. Thank you. Come on. Chester. Chester would follow. I'll put a. a... I guess I can make a campfire here. Coming at one, just so I can keep track of Chester. Whoa! It's like a boat. Look, it's a parrot! How sad. Is that a road? I was trying to look for rocks. Completely forgot what I was doing. Well, I have gold nuggets now. Yeah, I see a boulder. looking pretty melody right now. Hope nothing happens and make what I just said ironic. Probably make the funniest plays. Is Chester on the map? Yeah, Chester is on the map. I don't need to worry about making fire there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzz off. Uh, go back down. Honestly, a place full of bees is probably a good place. Uh settle down though. Need some more rocks. More rocks. Flower. Green mushroom. I'm gonna eat. I don't want to risk it. I kind of wanted to attack one of the tall birds. Fuck. Bitch. a very half-hearted coming at me. I guess it's just tired. I wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> what do we think here? Ah, it's raining! Didn't it not rain? Damn it. I guess I could settle down here.
frame will make a difference. I don't have enough for a campfire? 23 more rocks? Oh. Too bad about that. Okay, we have many roasted carrots. Uh, and I should continue to throw egg them. Fire. Ready to go out before the night ends. Because it's raining. That would be good for the rest of the night. What was that? Heard a weird moment. When's the next ad break? Uh, in 30 minutes, probably. <laughs> Let's continue my journey. It'll be slow. Gonna need some more flowers soon. Another crown. Oh, reach the edge. Go around then. Use some more flint. Flower! More flower! <laughs> Almost killed the butterfly by accident. I'm just trying to get the, the flower. Oh, three minute ad break is starting now? I thought it would be in 30 minutes. Okay. I'll be right back.
Uh, I'm back. Returned with some yogurt. Ad break is finished now. What? I somehow ended up with two harvest peaches. Back with Chester. Guess I should continue going to the right. Hear it. Dead end. Oh, I can make another flower crown now. Sounds so weird. Hmm. Not a single beefalo so far. I do, however, have berries. at me. Uh. Ah. <sighs> Get away from the spiders. Flip it down. If I find follow this path. Important than some butterfly wing. I'll go here. Go through this way. What is this? Where am I? Pretty good right now. I 
almost got filled by darkness. Emphasis on the almost. Now I just gotta stay here. Or feel. Yeah, another day, another night survived. Day four. I died on day five, so I'm pretty good. I have so many foods, too. Following these roads, see where it gets me. I didn't mean to do that. I'm spelunking? I did not mean to spelunk. I don't know what spelunky does. <laughs> this was a mistake. <laughs> Framing game theory. Inserting pathos. Loading, loading, loading. I hate LinkedIn. I get so many messages. I get so many emails like, they have invited you to become, uh, uh, invited you. I'm like, I don't, stop, stop emailing me. I need to just turn that off. Oh, how pretty this artwork of Wendy. I did not want to blame rope. Unfortunately, that means I have to load again. It looks so sad. Not much time has passed, so that's good. That mistake didn't cost me much except for my time. I was following a road, but now I'm not. Going around the perimeter. Mapping out the area. I'll get back to the road soon enough. So many 
three people. Do they have families? Is that their family? It's nice to meet you, but I don't want to die today. I should at least survive one more night. are fighting. None of my business. Why did you even... If y'all gonna fight like that, then why do you even live next to each other? What a self-own. Were they hoping that the other one would just move away? After they settled down? That would have never worked out. I hate the sound of bees buzzing. That was not bees, that was flies. Flies... Buzzing? Flies buzz? Ah! That's all goofy as fuck. Not follow me. Going to the bird's nest. Oh! Well, this is just a good, just a good place to get some, some gold, actually. Following me. Oh my god, they stopped. Bro, they said nowhere! Oh, no wormhole. I guess I could jump in. Jump in. Off to another part of the map. Having it for fire, so that's good. Pop another one on. Firewood. Fire! Burn brighter! More fuel! Feed the fire! Oh! I'm immune to fire, look at that. That's it, and it doesn't hurt me at all. So fearless. Okay, night's almost over. I'm gonna go. And my flower crown is going bad. Imagine you're chopping down a tree and it suddenly withers. God damn it. What the fuck is up? Like, thanks Obama. Randomly attacked by a tentacle monster. Are 
afraid. Well, swamp area has only nothing. Nothing interesting. What is it? This is free. I keep. He gives me twigs. No! Stop! 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 Ah! No! Oh well, I was nearby, so. What rocks? Well, I gotta go pick up my shit. I dropped all of it when I got attacked. What is that? Oh! Weber skull? Leave her alone, bitches! What'd she ever do to you? God. I'm over here trying to find my body again. Oh. Is this place? Wet spiky tree. If I set fire to it, it will no longer be wet. It will no longer be wet. Oh, this area just goes on forever. Where the fuck is my body? Fuck the wet pond. Fuck the wet spiky bush. Fuck the wet worm hut. Fuck the wet spider fan. Fuck the wet tentacle. Well, at least that survives longer. I died on the sex day. Like, why are you attacking a ghost? I wish I were an evil flower. I got good life. Bring it to being and then you weather away. Better than getting fucking webs by a tentacle beast. Lever skull. Okay, I'm almost here. Spider glands? Scale monster me. Never mind, it's scale. I don't want that. Spider glands. Lever skull. No, 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 no! Damn it. No, stop! What the hell? Were you there the whole time? I didn't even see you! Thank you, fucker! I'm trying to find my goddamn body! Leave me alone! It's here somewhere. Monster meat. Abigail's flower? That's mine! flower was there? That's not nice. That's not nice at all. If you don't steal my shit, I'll fucking kill you. me or is she trying to find me I lost on the way the hell am I go back
Surviving till day seven is pretty good for me. I knew it. Don't make sure here. Fuck! Damn it! I died again. I was not expecting that. Beef low. Beef low. Beef low. that a few times. This is the one. This is gonna be the one. I'm gonna be so fucking good. No one's gonna believe it. I'm gonna survive until day 100. Everyone's gonna be like, Melody who? And, and they're gonna be like, Oh, that's the one who, who uh, survived until day 100 and from starve at one time. And I'll be like, cool, what's up? That's pretty awesome. Fully subscribe to Melody West on Twitch. Using Twitch, Amazon Prime. He gets a sub or two, that'd be pretty fucking cool. So far, in the last eight days, I have made seven dollars on Twitch. Will you die for me? Yeah. Oh yeah, plant it. I forgot that you can plant a pine cones like that. You don't need a shovel. need flint. Ask? I'll get. Flint! Fox! now. It's bird. Get away from the birds. No birds here. No birds allowed. Not in my Twitch stream. Me. You're so fucking nosy. What is that? They hide in their fortress of hate. Oh, there's a those are wasps. That's what those were. That's why they look so evil. Kathleen? 
pues. Oh, let me stay cool and dry. Make a little hat for myself. But I already have a flower crown, so I can't do that. Anyways. ways. Once again, ship direct. Hold up. Hello, Kareem. Nice to see you again. How you doing? I can't use the hammer for that, so let's... No, not that. The pick. I didn't even make a pickaxe, did I? There. Double. Use a science machine to build a prototype. Razor. Pickaxe. Yes, right here. Oh, let me cut some of this. Am I? I'm pretty good right now. I've already died a few times. So I could be doing better in this game. That's some more cool. That just means that Abigail, that I'm gonna die soon. Don't predict my death like that. Ring around the rosy. Ashes, ashes, don't fall down. Oh. Nice, someone's over. Yeah! Sleep. Even though I'm drinking Kool-Aid, wake me up. I don't remember if I took my Adderall this. Time. I hope I did. I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna take another one. Okay. And where are the beefalo? I want to start a farm. But I need the beefalo first. That way I have manure. Is this game set to no beefalo mode? Rabbits sound like freaks! I should know, because I am a freak. Oh yeah, picking flowers makes your, your mental health go up. <laughs> I forgot about that. I was just picking flowers just in case my flower crown uh, gets bumpy and green. Looking pretty low. <gasps> the people Oh, it's my friend! Only one people? Where are the rest of them? Where are the rest? Ah, there's more over there! And there's fucking spiders. There's rabbits! Birds! Beepolo! Victorious. 
day in and day out, I died. But I have emerged victorious. Having met the people all! I'm just going around, marking it on the map. A lot of spiders in this area. Well, I'll go back. Oh, the the QR code is locking. Uh, what's up? There, that's better. Peaceful? Nice. Glad you're feeling peace. My buddy, play up there. Wow, this area goes on for a really long while. Fuck, it's raining. Okay, mark that area. Or end of the year. Go for something after all. Ah! There's so many of them. They're over here. Okay, this is the, this is the area. This is where I settle. Uh, I need some more rocks for the fire pit. Oh, but first, I have to. I just need a campfire first. Eat some roasted berries. Um, add some more cut grass to the fire. Ah, <sighs> uh, grass. I can hear them. Let me count those. We have a lot more of those. We have some. Grass for fire. Carrots for it. Woohoo! You should get away from that because if you come out, if, if it as it comes out, he's going to fight you. Do I need for the sciences again? I need some gold nuggets. I 
want to hug him. This looks valid. Why are they just... <laughs> I'll run and rock something for me. Airy bush. Some more rocks. Plug. each other. All, all y'all do is try to kill each other. It can't be good for your mental health. Do they also go pick flowers until it feels better? I wonder. And this wood goes on fucking forever. What is this road? I forgot if it's a dead end. Got rocks, bug sinkhole. These. Uh. Evil area full of tentacle monster. Or rocks to mine. Trees being weird. Fucking dead end. I don't like being here. Evil, got bad vibes. I mean, it's a good way to get some monster meat, at least. I'm watching. I don't want to die again. Not after finding the beefalo, finally. Let's just set this shit on fire. I have no wood. Is anything on fire? Some grass. Terrible area. Fucking cursed. <laughs> At least I got a spear. Dude. Out of it. Oh. I desperately need some grass. I really 
we need some grass. Where's the grass? Oh, no. Abigail. Help me. Stop chopping. Fucking damn it. Aw. Uh, I finally find the beefalo and then I die. Fuck. Starting our day off with some flower picking, some flints, brass, saplin. I have um, the materials needed. Make a fire anytime I go out. Spike is popping. Oop, go wrong. That's fighting. Get some chips. Oh, I'm running out. Blastism. Flower. Oh, whoops. Didn't click the flower correctly. One more. More is all I need. Okay, still make a fire. That's good. I can make a flower. The flower had the garlic.
Thanks. Don't pick up more flowers. Some space in your inventory for something else. Mine a little oh, mining. Mining is so fun. It's like that's fun. some of these carrots. Three minute ad break, okay. Be right back. Survives a total of zero days so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, I come at these.
second day of survival. There's still a little bit to go. Follow the perimeter, the map of this entire area. <laughs> Those damn rabbits. I wish all roads would the book be slow. I'm gonna be more mindful this time of uh, whether I have enough for the campfires. ASMR, walking around the uh, woods, dead sister, lost, trying to find their furry friends. That's what this is. Things were so good last time. I found my most poopinest friends of them all. Then I fucking died. Truly, the worst I could be. <sighs> Darkness will appear soon. It's just my carrots here. Wow. Hey, we. You would. I'm allergic to carrots. I do think so. I did test positive, but those have a high false positive rate. It does seem like I might be allergic to carrots, so like for real. Tomatoes, too. Broccoli. All the flowers. Um, not sure about green peppers. Those I'm still on the fence about. I might be allergic to oats a little bit. Corn, I'm not sure about. Oh, the gobble Can't see me with that big old eye of yours? Ridiculous. You need glasses? Big old monocle?
roasted carrot. So good for you. That's a small logic not me. I figured cooking would uh, keep the fire going for a little while longer. You better run. Ah, okay. Do I have enough for the science machine though? Okay, I just need logs. Oh, me. Uh, 30 more minutes and then we spin the wheel. I can't believe it's all. It's already been two and a half hours. Two and a half hours of me dying. What a world we live in. That's his cheap syrup lives on. Hello, frog. Fuck, I need to stop doing that! Why did I attack it? Why did I do that? What's the point of me doing I make my brain nice and healthy. I just like, I see something and I want to attack it, even though Abigail will just fuck you. I mean, not Abigail, Wendy will just die. I don't know why I keep calling Wendy Abigail. Play mapped out now? Area. I'm gonna walk over here. In here. Come back here, worm. Okay, well it's not working. It is not working out. The rabbit is simply too fast. I really do need one of those traps. I do still have enough to build a fire, which is good. Old nuggets everywhere. What do the the tall birds do they just poop gold nuggets or what? No, no. I don't have so much inventory space. <sighs> Thank you. That's me. I'm a sheep that's sleep. Is doing okay.
Frog legs? Frog legs! Thank you for the food. I should not eat them raw. Bad idea. Nice little thingy again. Uh, guess I should go this way instead. I haven't mapped this area out at all. Pick up some more grass. Flint, this is always good. That gill is so strong. She has everything. That's so much. Ah, oh, okay. Dead and over here. Go down? I think it could be a good idea just to start a campfire here. I'm surrounded by things that I can set on fire. I mean, that I can put into the fire. Yeah. Ah, uh, chop, chop, chop. I didn't mean to drop it. Can't hit. Huh? Oh, look. Carrots. Oh, frog legs, too. Frog legs. Why don't you eat that one? Oh, that's a pine cone. Go exploring again. Oh my boy, yes. Sapling. Which flint I got? I could use some more flint. This trail leads to nowhere. Damn. Farm. Farm. But only if I find the bee flow again. Otherwise, there's no real point.
Mozart has very peace. Relax, you know, listen. Stop! Even that bonk sound is pretty fun. And they're chasing me around trying to kill me. An adventurer, but I am cartographer. It's not sale yet. Oh, it is sale. My bad. Well, I can I can use that as fuel for the fire. Actually, throw it in there. Suspicious dirt pile. Oh, okay. Dead body. Okay, up here. Ah, uh, what an empty field. Don't be blowing. Ship does that. Oh, haven't been here yet. me. I wasn't expecting them. <laughs> some rocks and then I can make my science mission. Oh. Useless, I guess. Toss some, uh, wood on this fire. Oh, look at the little dude! Look at sleep! Oh! Oh, fish 
fishing. Got some birds. Make a net for catching bugs. Umbrella. Healing cells, ashes, rocks, spider glands. Space. Yeah, I get it. Don't worry, I don't want it. God damn it, I'm looking for boulders. Where's the damn locks? Um, and, nope, that's a flower. Find the flower anyway. I saw it. The boulder. How much does it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your underwear on. Mm -hmm. I can knock down some. Oh! Fucking. I just wanted the rock. Relax. so goofy. Hey, finally getting some more rocks. Not for the science. That's good. Um. Oh, spear. Lucky me. Uh, well, I need to head back. Oh, is this touchstone? Live it up, live it up while you can, you majesty. Whoa, there's so many carrots here. I'll, uh, go to the fire. Fire pit. Appling. Wise. Kingdom Park. What is it? Add some. That's close. What the hell? Close this log. Roll L. Oh. 
Ah, uh, safer rock to mine. I just need some, uh... Oh, I already have enough for the science mission. Good. Very good. Oh, two minutes left. Good timing. I have charcoal. That's cool. That's nice to have. now that was not edible oh well alas uh-huh Aries. A storage. Hammer. Endothermic fire. It's cool. Thermometer. Dark fire dart. Fine. Other pencil. Had a still fire. waste killing salt pump it backpack draw roll night Little hat. Passion melon? Where can I get a watermelon from? Raincoat. Pentacle spot? More fresh? Where's the damn. Oh, okay. It has to be closer to it. About that, pitch fork, prototype, razor. I don't know. Endothermic fire, food, basic farm. Okay, I need manure. Once I make this farm, I'll save and quit.
I'll see that? Yeah. Ooh, a call it farm. Oh wait, let me actually spin the wheel first. Case. Okay. Atlanta don't starve again. Let's do, let's spin again. Spin, spin, spin. Hey, what do we land on, huh? Data Magical Girl, okay. I said quit.
Ah, well, that sucks. Hmm. I have no idea what went wrong. Go to YouTube Studio. I have to, I have to redo a whole bunch of stuff now. This time my live stream is still live on YouTube. Okay. I just need to uh, change the game then. See if the game pops up on there. Okay, yeah, it does, right there. Let's change the game info on Twitch. It's really stressful when stuff like this happens. Okay, it looks like everything's okay now. Let me just check this again to make sure. Incoming ad break. I'll just start the ad break now. Give me a few seconds to recover from what just happened.
Okay. Back with How to Date a Magical Girl with this awesome music. I don't know why it sounds like this, but cool. Uh Okay, let's start a new game. Looking a little boob sleeve right here, but that's okay. Loading memory module. Welcome. Before we begin, we need to find out more about you. Please answer the following questions truthfully. What do you look like? look like this? Not really. I'm fat, not skinny. The regard, we shall continue. Question two, what is your name? Magoogie. I see, so your name is Magoogie. Magoogie, really your name? Absolutely. I need to confirm all the answers you've given me. Your name is Megugi and you look like this. That's what I'm going with. Thank you for providing this information. You may begin. You're welcome. Today is a wondrous day. It's a day I've dreamed about for nearly three months. A day that I surely thought would never arrive. All the blood, sweat, and tears I've shed these past months have led me to this very point in time. This perfect moment, the very point of my entire existence. I now hold in my possession the Holy Grail, an object of such great value and importance that it would spell disaster if it fell into the wrong hands. It rests heavily in my palm, seeming to pulsate with life. The inconspicuous brown paper bag covering it does little to mask its holy aura. As I gaze upon this most sacred of objects, I make a solemn vow to myself. I promise to guard this object until the day I die. For now, it's time to view the object's full, magnificent splendor. Volume 35 of QT Star. I unwrap the brown paper bag and I'm nearly blinded by the light emanating from the pen. Finally, I now hold the uncovered object in all of its radiant glory. It's the limited edition special cover version of Volume 35 of my all-time favorite ma magical, ma <laughs> magical girl manga series. Yes, finally! I waited for three months after this volume was announced for today, the release day. I find myself shedding a single tear of joy as I bask in the beauty of the limited edition cover. With only 100 of these printed, I am truly one of the luckiest people alive. I have been following this series since I was just an impudent child. I have grown alongside it, ch chanting the heroine's name in my sleep night after night. And now the very last volume has arrived. Years of worship have guided me here. Today the series is complete. I return home and read this most valued tome and ancient and achieve true nirvana reading the series over the pa over the years has been an uphill battle my friends often mocked me for following a children's manga series but they just didn't see the beauty of it they couldn't possibly fathom the rich intricate history of the world the heroine's ambitions and motives the ever-present darkness and threatening to engulf the world if they truly wanted to believe this is a children's manga that's their right but i wouldn't be swayed by their narrow-minded opinions I feel myself trembling in anticipation as my fingers reach forward to open the cover. No! I must be patient. I need to return home first before I dive into this adventure. I just can't keep my eyes off the beautiful cover. This walk home will truly be a test of my inner strength and willpower. You're not gonna get hit by a truck soon, are you? <laughs> Getting hit by a truck right now? That'd be funny. Let's hope. I should power walk towards my house. The quicker I get home, the quicker I can begin reading. Excellent idea. The journey speeds along at a rapid pace. I don't even have to take my eyes off the manga. I know this route so well. Just a few more blocks to go. Come on, get hit by a truck. Come on. Initializing world? I feel like I've wasted most of spring, lazing away with nothing to do. Afternoon. 
April 15th. I can't even remember the majority of it. The days just passed like a blur. Every day the same as the last. At the very least, Hikari came to visit me some days. At least, I think she did. I don't remember if she ever stayed long or if we talked much. Still, it was a nice thing for her to do. This week has been unusually hot for the season. I think the heat has been scrambling my brains like eggs on a fry pan. I've been finding it so hard to focus lately to concentrate on anything at all. I know I should perk up a little, try and get some things done before the season ends. But then again, it's just so easy to lay here on the grass without a care in the world. I wonder how much longer I can go on like this. Everything changed on that fateful day two years ago. That day I picked up the final volume of my favorite magical girl manga series. I read it cover to cover and when I finished, reality began to sink in. The story was over. The story I had been following for nearly my entire life was just finished. Since that day, I felt so very, very lost. My appetite disappeared, I stopped hanging out with friends, I dropped all of my hobbies. Apparently I sunk into a very deep and tragic depression. The days went by in a haze, and looking back, I can't remember a single moment with any kind of clarity. It's sad, but that's the truth of it. I can try and blame the recent heat as much as I want, but really, I've been feeling like this for a few s now. I need to pick myself up. If I don't get a grip, I'm going to throw away my entire future. I need to get my head back in the game. I need to pull it together before tomorrow. Tomorrow, the first day of my new school. It's kind of hard to believe. Even though I graduated high school, someone decided for me that my study should continue. I assume that's someone with Hikari. She's always meddling in my business. I suppose it's her way of looking after me. Before I knew it, I was enrolled in a new academy without so much as my nod of approval. Classes start tomorrow whether I'm ready or not. As for the academy itself, I can't say I know much about it. There was a brochure in my letterbox at one point, but that probably fell into the recycling can. I remember it had a lot of smiling faces on it. Probably just typical propaganda. I don't even know what kind of classes I'll be attending. It could be anything, considering Kikari's eclectic tastes. She'd probably sign me up for a cooking class, or horseback riding, or advanced basket weaving. Who knows? I'm beginning to doze off in the warm afternoon sun. Just before my awareness slips away completely, a shadow falls across my face. Hmm? Someone is suddenly standing over me. I squint, trying to make out their features. It's time to wake up now, Migugi! The Hikari? Hikari Sato. Ah, uh, Sato. It's a very popular name. Very common name. I shoot the girl a dirty look as if accusing her for interrupting my rest. It takes me another couple of seconds to recognize the girl. Blame my foggy mind. Oh, it's you, Hikari. Jeez, is that what passes for a greeting these days? Sorry, I was just lost in thought. <clears throat> well, it's my fault for expecting you to treat me with a little respect. I said I'm sorry. Fine, fine. This intrusive girl is none other than Hikari, one of my oldest friends. She's kind of cute in her own way, I guess. I've known her for such a long time that I can't imagine her as anything other than just a friend. So, I wonder if she feels the same way about me. Hikari is the kind of girl that shoots first and asks questions later, but that's probably due to her being overprotective rather than assertive. It's the reason I assume she is the one who enrolled me at a new academy. I don't know anyone else who cares about my future like she does. Also, not really sure how you can enroll another person in an academy without their permission? That's weird. How did that even happen? When we were younger, she had a habit of following me around everywhere, kind of like a little sister. As we grew older, this habit evolved into melding, meddling in my business and stealing my lunch every day. It probably sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm honestly not. Scotty is a great person, and I'm truly lucky to have a friend like her. I just don't really understand what she sees in me, or what she gets out of our relationship. Anyway, what are you- what are you doing out here? Do you have any idea how long it took me to find you? I'm just relaxing. What's the big deal? Relaxing? You don't do anything but relax. You're aware we're starting school tomorrow, right? Yep, painfully aware. Wait, you said we're, as in we? Are you attending class with me, Hikari? Oh, give me a break. I'm benchte. I've explained this to you at least six and a half times. I swear, talking to you is like talking to a brick wall. Except the brick wall is better looking than you are. Hey, I object to that. <clears throat> Look, we're going to the academy together and that's final. You don't have a say in the matter, okay? Okay, please don't hurt me. I wouldn't dream of hurting you. Um, I have a question though. What kind of classes are we taking? 
A thoughtful expression crosses Hikari's features. I can't tell... I can tell she's making up her mind on whether to scold me or give me a proper answer. Well, if you'd read the guide I left for you at your house... Here we go. You'd already know that we'll be taking basic first-year classes. Not things too difficult, I'd imagine. They know you're a noob, so you shouldn't have any problems. Somehow, being called a noob hurts more than anything else Hikari could have come up with. Aren't, aren't you a noob as well, Hikari? She looks taken aback, almost as offended as I got just seconds ago. Well, no, I'm not new to this. You know I've been practicing for years. Practicing? What is she talking about? I'm confused. What are you? What have you been practicing? A frown crosses Hikari's face. I know this expression well. It's her I'm so tired of your clueless ass face. I've been practicing to become a fully fledged magical girl, of course. Her words hit me like a truck. Did she just say magical girl? Somehow the stupor I've been living in for endless months shatters in an instant. I feel like my eyes have opened for the first time in a long time. I see Hikari's smiling face beaming at me, as if she's so very proud of what she just said. Of course. Of course I remember that Hikari is trying to become a magical girl. How could I let such a magnificent fact elude me for so long? I've known as much for years. So, <clears throat> if I put two and two together, I see the academy we're attending from tomorrow is a school for magical girls. But why am I going? I have no magical talent whatsoever. <laughs> you look like you just took an ice cold shower, McGoogie. Is everything okay? I think about her question for a moment. I do feel more alert now. It's a familiar feeling. It's almost the way I felt before, back before my favorite manga series finished. The truth is, magical girls are very, very real. The whole time I had my head buried in man uh, manga, <laughs> the whole time I had my head buried in manga, real life magical girls existed all around me. I think I was just too nervous to ever go out and meet them. Except for Hikari. I knew her before she ever awakened to her powers. I can't quite explain why I've let my mind stay so foggy these last few years. But, maybe now, with school starting tomorrow, I can begin to work towards becoming a functioning human being again. I give Hikari a slight smile. Hikari, why am I going to a school for magical girls? Hikari's shelf was on the spot. She seems hesitant to tell me. The truth is... About a month ago, you and I were having dinner, and all of a sudden, your powers awoke. W what I noticed it immediately. But you seemed like your old, oblivious self and barely paid attention to what happened. So what did happen? Like I said, we were having dinner together. I accidentally knocked a glass of water off the table. It was going to shatter on my bare feet and I screamed, afraid of cutting myself in the glass. It happened so quickly I couldn't move away in time. And also, this image does not represent that at all. And you... You kind of just glance at the glass and it stops mid-air, frozen in time. I mean, literally frozen in time, ice and all. I don't believe you. I would remember something like that. You just shrugged and continued eating. I think at the time you just believed I had made a glass freeze in place. After all, you've known about my magical powers for a long time. I awoke to my powers when I was 13. Maybe 14? I don't quite remember, but still, I have a very specific set of powers and don't forget I'm untrained. There's no way I could freeze something in time. So, after that night, I replayed the event back in my mind over and over. The only explanation is that you froze a glass. You suddenly awoke to your own powers and saved me from getting cut on broken glass. So what you're saying is... <laughs> I'm a hero! <clears throat> Not quite, Niku. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I never, <laughs> I never enrolled us to attend the academy. We were both sent letters from the association. They can detect who has magical powers and who doesn't, you know? They keep a record of everyone. According to the association, once magical girls reach 18 years of age, it's the law for them to attend the academy. The letters basically demand that we attend the academy effective immediately. Because you awaken to your powers right on the age of 18, you get the joy of going back to school. Regardless, we both start class tomorrow. We'll both be training to become magical girls. All of this information is swirling around my head like a tornado. I feel simultaneously excited and exhausted. Do I really have magical powers? Can I actually freeze things in time? I can't think of any other situation where I've done such a thing, and I have no clue how to make it happen again. Well, I suppose that's the point of the academy. They should train me to reach my full potential, right? I guess attending class with Hikari wouldn't be so bad. Maybe I'll make some new friends, too. 
What do you say we get out of here? We can grab some dinner to celebrate our last night of freedom. Sounds good to me. You're paying, though. I am not, you big lug. You can pay for both of us. Hey, dinner was your idea, not mine. Why should I pay? <sighs> You're just as hopeless as always. How do I get dragged to go back to school with you? you love it. <laughs> Let's see how many classes we can make it through before I strangle you out of frustration. Hmm. Oh, it's now Monday. Shut up. Oh, for the, please, for the love of all that is holy, shut up. I begrudgingly open my eyes and am greeted by the sound of my alarm clock having a seizure on the floor. Not that great. Not the best way to put that. That's ableist. <laughs> Let's not say that. The glowing red numbers taunt my blurry vision by fading in and out at full speed. I groan and rub my eyes, trying to clear my vision. Finally, I can make out the numbers on the clock clearly. 8.02 a.m. I yawn. Thankfully, it's still early. I've got nothing to do today except eat leftovers, so why did I set my alarm for such an early time? 8.03 a.m. I smack my lips at the thought of the cool Chinese takeout waiting for me in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah! I want some Chinese food, too. <laughs> 8.04 a.m. I stifle a yawn. Some distant thought is tugging at the back of my mind. Have I forgotten something important about today? Did I have something more serious to do than eat leftovers? 8.05 a.m. Nah, impossible. There's nothing important going on in my life right now. Maybe Hikari said she'll visit today or something small like that. 8.06 a.m. Yeah, nothing's coming back to me. Oh, am I supposed to go to school today? 8.07 a.m. I feel like a bu I feel like a bucket of cold water has just flashed over my head. Suddenly wide awake, I realize that I've completely forgotten that today is my first day of the academy. Everything is coming back to me now, including the fact that Hikari told me first year orientation starts at 8.30 a.m. Sharp! Sharp! 8.08 a.m. I can't be late for my first day of the academy. What will Hikari think of me? More importantly, what will the cute magical girls I've never met think of me? I leaped out of bed like a frog launching from my lily pad. I immediately regret this action as I'm still tangled up in my blankets and they drag me down to the floor. I nearly avoid hitting my head. I thank my lucky stars that I didn't get hurt before frantically scrambling to my feet. I dash out of my room and into the kitchen. I open the fridge and am greeted by the wafting aroma of cold, sweet, and sour pork leftovers. I grab the container unceremoniously and launch it across the kitchen, cheering when it lands in the open microwave. I dash in the microwave and mash the keypad blindly. The light flickers to life and the machine starts up with a sputter and a hum. While my ex excellent choice of breakfast is being cooked to perfection, I decide to get dressed. When I reach my closet, I come to the sinking realization that I don't have an academy uniform yet. I have opened the door. I heave open the door to the side only to be greeted with the sight of an unfamiliar dry cleaning bag and a coat hanger. With a confused frown, I pull the bag down and find a note written on the front in cute handwriting. I went to the trouble of picking up your new uniform for you. You owe me one, Scotty. Oh, that Hikari, she thinks of everything. I tear into the dry cleaning bag and pull out the brand new uniform. I'm in the middle of climbing to my new threads just in an angry cacophony of beasts and boobs calls to me from the kitchen. Breakfast is ready! I finished on in my amazing new outfit and rock it into the kitchen to throw food into my gullet. My breakfast is demolished in a new personal record of 12.74 seconds, and then I'm out on the door in a flash. I hardly even know where I'm going, but I recall Hikari saying the academy is walking distance from my home. It's not hard to find a map on my phone, so I load that up and begin my hurried walk. A little time passes. It's 8.24 a.m. Can I make it in time? The map on my phone tells me I'll arrive in eight minutes. I'll be a little late, but a couple of minutes never hurt anyone, right? I wonder if Hikari will be there to greet me at the school gate. It'll be nice to see a familiar face after this whirlwind of a morning. My power walk evolves into a jog when I see the school gates looming in the distance. I can't believe it. I'm actually going to make it. There's a few other straggling students making their way into the school. They're all wearing the academy's uniform, including a signature pastel yellow vest. God damn, I read that so fucking fast. I just felt like the urgency required it, but there was so much text. So much more text there than I was anticipating. I noticed that all the other students are female. I suppose that's not too surprising. This is a school for magical girls after all. Still, it's the first time I'm witnessing such a thing. I finally reach the school gates. When I peer beyond them, I can see the other students entering what looks to be the school hall. I suppose that's where orientation is being held? I glance around to see if Ikadi is here. No luck though. Maybe she's waiting for me inside the hall? I break into a run toward the school hall, sprinting as fast as my unfit legs can carry me. I weave in and around the other students, also making a mad dash forward. I'm nearly there. I can almost taste my fashionably late entrance. 
My foot snags in another student's shoe. Guess I wasn't quick enough to get out of their way. I don't even have time to let out a gasp as I fall flat on my face on the pavement. Ow! I... I was so close. I nearly made it. Now I'm just lying in the ground, face down like an idiot. A little squeal erupts from in front of me. My first thought is that maybe I squashed some small, cute animal when I fell. Like a kitten. Or a squirrel that can squeal. I push myself off the ground and am greeted by an unexpected sight. Yui Akiyama, I have a similar haircut. <laughs> a cute girl wearing glasses has fallen on the ground in front of me. She looks to be about my age, so I assume she's a first year student as well. She's trying and failing to cover up her pants. Her panties, which I believe the entire world can now see. Maybe you should wear some shorts under that skirt. Eek! Don't look! I bashfully turned my head away for at least a second. Then I turned back to her. Stop! Here, stop looking! I'm sorry, I think I knocked you over. No, I think it was my fault. I was in a rush and wasn't looking where I was going. Are you hurt? No, I'm okay. The girl is still trying to adjust her skirt so that she can rescue her dignity. Um, are we really late for orientation? Yeah, I think so. Terrible. I promised myself I would make it on time. I can't believe I slept in. The stupid, stupid girl. Stupid, stupid! You know, don't beat yourself up. I slept in too. You don't understand. I only slept in because I went to bed at 3 a.m. So I promised myself I wouldn't stay up so late. This girl sure seems interesting. Wonder what could have, have caused her to stay up so late the day before school starts. Uh, why were you up until 3 a.m.? That's that's too embarrassing to answer. Come on now, the fucking game is my bad. For some reason, the game is not. It's way too way too big. Whoa, that is huge. What happened? What's with the game capture? Why is it so big? My bad. Here you go. I didn't even see that. There. Now you can see everything. Come on now. You can tell me. It's not like we're strangers. I mean, I've seen your... Yeah, don't say it! Oops. Fine. I'll tell you why I was up so late. I was watching films. Films, huh? I wonder what kind of films. It's not my fault I have trouble going to bed after watching horror movies. I start to see shadows lurking in every corner, and I get too scared to even try to sleep. I don't expect someone like you to know what it's like. You become so engrossed in the tale of the macabre that all the hairs in your body stand on end. You frightened senseless at the slightest strange sound from within your own home. Until you experience that kind of paralyzing terror, you'll never understand the joy of cult horror films. The girl is breathing heavily, obviously exhausted from her, from her passionate outburst. Someone like you? What a weird thing to say! I think she may have a screw loose. Uh, let's not say that. You haven't lived until you've seen a film that makes your toes curl, chills your bones, and gives you goosebumps all at the same time. I'll take your word for it. This girl likes to scare herself senseless, and then she wonders why she can't get to sleep at a decent hour. So, um, you still haven't covered up your, you know. The girl squeals again in embarrassment. I feel sorry for her if the view wasn't in my favor. Oh, that's so weird. Don't say that. Stop looking. Sorry. My curse was such bad luck. How can something so embarrassing happen on the very first day of school? I suppose I understand why she's so, so distressed. I forgot to set the timer, too. How long has that been? God damn. Uh, since the ad break started, so... Let's just backtrack. Uh, what was that? This would not tell me the time, did it? Give me the time, this message was sent? No? I don't know how to go... Here? Hmm, where is it? <sighs> uh, 
Uh, so, ad break finished at 5 or 5. So it's been 25 minutes. Okay. 25 minutes. Hmm. Means 35 minutes left. Fuck. Whatever. Ah! I'm trying to do math in my head. Okay. I suppose I understand why she's so distressed. Maybe I should say something to calm her down. Is this a choice inventory? Oh, what? Status? McGoogie. Options. Save. Hide a window. Oh, okay. Auto log. Save load. Okay. Um. By the way, what's her name? My name? Yeah. Is that such an unusual question? No, I suppose not. My name is Yui. Yui Akiyama. Um. Nice to meet you, I guess. It's nice to meet you, Ui. My name is Megugi. I get to my feet and dust my myself off. I reach a hand out to Yui. Here, I'll help you up. I swear that Yui blushes for a second before grabbing my hand. Her fingers are soft and delicate. Warm. She grips my hand ever so lightly and I manage to lift her to her feet. The boob sleeves are sleeving. Thank you. I'm sorry we had to meet us such a under such distressing circumstances. Don't sweat it. I'm just happy to have you have met you at all. The soft red blush returns to her cheeks and she looks away shyly. You should go. Yeah. Without another word, Yui takes the lead and walks in front of me. I follow behind her obediently. We make our way to the entrance of the school hall. The big wooden doors are closed, roaring our way forward. Yui tries pulling the handle. The door is stuck fast. She frowns and changes tactics, pushing the door instead. So no luck. The door is securely locked. Do they really lock out latecomers? I guess so. Oh no, oh no. Are we going to be punished for missing orientation? I think I can handle the tension. Calm down, calm down. I'm sure we're not going to be punished. We'll just have to wait here until orientation ends. Orientation ends, I suppose. I give Yui a shrug. If we wait around for the students to leave the hall, we'll surely run into Hikari. Hikari will know, will know what to do. She always does. In the meantime, why don't we get to know each other? Yui doesn't say anything. A downtrodden expression has etched itself on her features. She leans against the wall and lets out a sigh. Um, so... You know any magic? Either she doesn't hear me or she's choosing to ignore me now. Her eyes are closed as though trying to block out the world around her. Well, not much I can do, I suppose. I slump down and sit on the ground. I have no idea how long orientation goes for or how long we'll be waiting around here for. A bell rings. Finally, orientation is finished. The doors of the school hall swing wide open and a flood of students leak out of the building. There must be hundreds of girls all scurrying forward. As they exit the hall, they split into different directions, surely heading towards their first classes for the day. If only I knew what my classes were, I could head towards where I'm supposed to go, but I have no clue what I'm doing here. I need to find Hikari. I stand to the side as all the students tumble out of the hall. I lose sight of Yui on the other side of the crowd. Oh well. She stopped talking to me anyway. Not my fault. I desperately try to catch a glimpse of Hikari's familiar face in the crowd. It doesn't help that she's shorter than most of the other students, so she'll likely be lost in the, in the group. I suddenly feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. You idiot! How could you miss orientation? I was waiting inside the hall for you and then they locked the doors and I had to sit by myself. Buddy, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear it! You let me down, me Googie. You're going to make this up to me. I will, I will. I'm really sorry. What happened anyway? 
you sleep in? Well, yeah, I did. But actually, I got here at a decent time. The problem is, I knocked another girl over and we got caught up talking. Another girl? Yeah, actually. Because the crowd has thinned out, I can see Yui standing awkwardly by the doors. It was that girl, over there. Daddy looks toward Yui, standing all alone. I see. Is she a first year as well? Lost. Yeah, I think so. so we got locked outside. We weren't sure what to do. <laughs> we weren't sure what to do or where to go. I was kind of hoping you could help us, Hikari. Hikari almost looks sad just for a moment. But then a bright smile flashes across her face. I'm always happy to help. Now that orientation is over, we have to go to our homeroom and meet our teacher. I can lead the way. Hikari begins to skip away. I grab Yui's attention with a wave and beckon her towards us. What? What is it? We can go to home and meet our teacher now. Do you want to follow us? Yeah. Okay, thanks. With that, the three of us make our way to the classroom. A thruple situation. The classroom is noisy. There must be 30 students packing in. Padding away and waiting for the teacher to arrive. Daddy managed to find seats for myself and Yui all lined up next to each other. Not a bad arrangement, if I do say so myself. This school must be super small if they're just assuming that they have the same class for homeroom, huh? I glance around the room. It all feels very familiar, just like high school all over again. The students are even in cliques, and it's only the very first day. Yeah, what kind of, what kind of college has school uniforms? There's a group of sporty-looking girls at the back of the class. One of them is bouncing a basketball for some reason. I don't know why she brought that to the academy. Maybe just to reinforce her clique stereotype? At the front of the class are the bookworms. They're shy, speaking only in whispers and glancing nervously at the other students. Hanging out by the classroom door are the rebellious girls. A few of them have streaks of neon colored dye in their hair. Their uniforms are untidy and a few have cut off their sleeves. And here in the middle of the class are Hikari, Yui, and myself. Hikari and I go way back, of course. I've just met Yui. As for Hikari and Yui's relationship, I don't think they've spoken a single word to each other. Will they become friends? Time will tell. The clamor of voices quiets down as the classroom door opens and a woman enters. She makes her way to the front of the class, offers a smile, and begins her speech. Good morning, class. I'm your homeroom teacher, Miss Otsuka. But you can all call- <laughs> Wow, I cannot read that. Good morning, class. I'm your homeroom teacher, Miss Otsuka. But you can all call me by my first name, Satomi. You'll find that I'm a very informal teacher, unlike any teacher you've had during your school years, for sure. It's my hope that we'll all become friends during your first year here at the Academy. I hope that we can be built a relationship that carries on long after you graduate. This new teacher, Satomi, seems really nice. I can't really pick out just one defining feature of this new teacher. No, I'd have to pick two. She has two very large, very defining features. Her boobies. She got some titties on her. On a less shallow, shallow note, I guess she has an inviting smile. Overall, she's definitely not bad for an older woman. She seems to have captured the class's attention. Even the rebellious girls have taken a seat to show, her res show their respect. I'm sure you all have a million questions burning in your brains, especially after orientation. Rest assured, I am here to help every one of you achieve your goals and get good grades during the year. As your homeroom teacher, I'll offer you supporting guidance. If you need assistance with any of your subjects, you can always come to me and wrestle on my big old titties. Hathami claps her hands together and beams. Now then, with all of that out of the way, as she takes a step forward, her elbow knocks a stack of papers off her desk. Important looking documents scatter all over the floor. The class gasps. Then fall silent, waiting to see how she reacts to the mess she just made. Uh, oops. Tatami's face turns bright red and she bends down to pick up some of the papers. She lowers herself and a loud thud echoes, echoes to the classroom as her head slips into the corner of her desk. The class gasps once more, then silence. Uh, ouch. Oh, uh, I'm just a clumsy little girl. I hear a slight giggle from Yui sitting next to me. She obviously thinks this whole affair is pretty funny. A few girls rush to the front of the class to help the- What the fuck is this music? Oh my god! This music is gonna make me confused. I feel like I'm getting- I'm gonna get- It's gonna knock me unconscious. 
A few girls rush to the front of the class to help the teacher pick up her papers. When Satomi stands up, I can make out the faint purple outline of her bruise forming on her forehead. God damn. These vocals. After two clumsy failures, Satomi hasn't exactly managed to maintain her composure. I can't concentrate. I can't read with this music. She's glowing red and a bead of embarrassed sweat trickles down her face. Um, class, if you could all just ignore that little spectacle, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> a few students giggle quietly. Satomi does her best to continue with her speech. Somehow, she hasn't entirely lost the class's respect, which is admirable. Okay, class. Who was I? Oh, yes. For our first piece of business today, I'll be covering the subjects you'll be learning this year. Let's begin. There are three core subjects you must all attend in order to progress in the academy. Progression, as in video game. These subjects are magical history, practical magic, and alchemy. Any other subjects you choose to undertake at the academy are optional, but will provide credits towards your overall de degree in what? What are we getting a degree in? Magical girl? Is the is the degree just a bachelor's and magical girlness? What is the title of the degree? In magical history class, you'll learn all about the origins of the magical girls that become commonplace in our world. You'll discover how they came into being and their importance in our modern society. In practical magic class, you'll undertake rigorous magical training to hone your minds and body. You'll learn spells and abilities that are essential for a magical girls to undertake her. Finally, in alchemy class, you'll become familiar with the art of crafting magical items. From magical swords and staves, the potions and portals, this is where your creativity will be put to the test. Hmm. That sounds pretty cool. I had no idea there was so much involved in becoming a magical girl. I heard the hurried scratching of pen on paper and looked to my left. Scotty is scribbling notes frantically, her tongue sticking out the side of her mouth as she concentrates. Very anime of her. Very cartoon. To my right, Yubi is also taking notes. Though she's decorated the page of her notebook with doodles of a wicked witch stirring a cauldron. Ah, what a queen. That sounds fun. She was already doodling in class? Great. Her time here at the academy will be one of the most memorable experiences of her life. In fact, when you look back on these days, you may think it was all just a dream. That's how pleasant your days here will be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure think of it as a dream would indicate that this was the most pleasant days of your life. I feel like that would really be that it was horrible and your brain has decided that you need to forget it. At least that's how it is for me. With that said, don't think you can just slack off. In order to graduate, you will need to put in a lot of hard work. Don't expect to excel at every class. All students are different and you may find that what comes naturally to you, naturally to you is very difficult for someone else. It's important to not let your classes and studying time dominate your life. Socialize. Make friends. Take the time to relax once in a while. I highly recommend joining a club when you get the chance. We host a variety of fun clubs that you can attend in your free time. Take part in activities and meet new people. Free time? There are social links? Are there social links in this game? I mean, there's an inventory. That is... Section. Oh, we are gonna get social links. Finally, to wrap up my little speech, I need to tell you what to expect at exam time. The academy runs exams twice during the year. You can expect an exam each semester. The key attributes we assess you on are magic, alchemy, perception, and expertise. Is what? Oh wait, it's all the way at the top. All the way down? Uh, exam twice during a year. Okay, well, not telling me. I, it's the lack of, we need an Oxford comma, okay? I can't because, because this is written in British English or Canadian English, whichever. So I can, I can't tell if it's perception and expertise or if perception and expertise are two separate items. <laughs> Fucking give me an Oxford comma. Please stop teaching people in Britain to not use the Oxford comma. It's really necessary. 
okay? It makes, it makes the sentences you write less comprehend, comprehensible if I cannot have a fucking comma, okay? Please give me the comma. It's important to focus on raising these attributes during your study time. You can improve your attributes with theory or practice. Oh, after that rant, I can't speak anymore. Honestly, this haircut is really cute. I'm like jealous of it. Also, what is that in her hand? Her hand's looking a little weird. Is that how hands are? I feel like there's something wrong with the hand. It's important to focus on raising these attributes during your study time. You can improve your attributes with theory or practice. There's no wrong way to go. Reading books, taking time to study, practicing smells, or performing alchemy. All of these activities will help you improve your attributes. You may find that other activities outside of school also help you out. Be sure to explore and find out what works best for you. Thank you, Tutorial Sesame. If your key attributes are high enough come exam time, you will no doubt perform very well. So as long as you work hard at improving yourself, you have no need to stress. Should you fail your exams? Well, let's not go into that today, okay? I'm sure you will all succeed with flying colors. Satomi smiles widely at the class. Everyone seems to be in a good mood after hearing her passionate speech. I run through the subjects she talks about in my head. Magical history, practical magic, and alchemy. They all sound fairly interesting. I get the feeling I'll enjoy practical magic the most. After all, isn't that about casting spells and seeing real magic happen before your eyes? Satomi rips, wraps up her little speech with a few heartfelt quotes from some famous magical girls, or something along those lines. I start getting hungry, so I begin to zone out. Oh, me too. Before I know it, I'm, begin I'm being shuffled out of the classroom by Hikari. All the other students are leaving too, and Yui's falling behind. Hikari pulls me aside in the corridor. So, Miguki, what did you think? Everything sounds so exciting, right? Er, uh, yeah. I actually think I'll enjoy my time here. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I have a feeling we'll have most of our classes together, so we can always help each other out with our studies. I notice Yui standing off to the side of the corridor. She's glancing at her phone absentmindedly. I get the feeling she's not one to make friends easily, and she doesn't seem to know anyone at this school. Maybe I should make an effort and invite her to hang out with Hikari and myself? <laughs> the little <laughs> the hearts are so cute. I'm super excited about magical history class. I want to learn about all the famous magical girls from history like Joan Dog and Cleopatra. Cleopatra? You're claiming Cleopatra? <laughs> cool. <laughs> I let Hikari trail off as I wander over to Yui. Hey! Hey! My, my fucking microphone fell. Yui looks up from her phone, somewhat taken aback. I... I wasn't waiting around for you or anything like that. I... I just don't know anyone here. It's okay, don't sweat it. Um... I'm sorry about running into you, you know, this morning. Yui almost gives me a smile. Okay. I'm glad I met at least one new person today. Me too. If you don't mind, you're more than welcome to hang out with myself and Hikari. Thank you. I, I'd like that. I'll feel more comfortable having a few friends around. Hikari stomps over to us in a huff. Hey, Gugi! I was in the middle of talking to you and you just walked away. Who told you to be so rude? It certainly wasn't me. No child of mine would ever do something such a thing. Did I say something something... Something such a thing? Did I say that? I can't fucking speak at all right now. Sorry, Hikari. Um, I figured I should probably introduce you since we'll be taking classes together. Gadi, this is Yui. And Yui, this is my little friend, Gadi. Your little friend? Is that all I am to you? <laughs> We've known each other for how many years now? The amount of disrespect I get from you is incredible. Whoa, whoa, I'm sorry. Hikari, I'm sorry. It was just like a little joke about how little you are. <laughs> Yui, Hikari is my childhood friend. We've known each other forever. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Hikari. Nice to meet you, too. Since we're all new here, we should all be friends. It'll make school more fun, right? Yeah, yeah. That sounds good, Megugi. Yui then does something I didn't expect. He bows formally to Hikari. 
Daddy, I hope we can be good, we can be good friends. Please take care of me. I'm taken aback by her formality and politeness. Even Hikari is, has a shocked look in her face and can only offer a stuttering reply. Thank you. I hope we can be good friends. Yui offers Hikari a warm smile, then blushes a little and goes back to burying her face in her phone. Guess she got a bit embarrassed. Hey, who wants to get something to eat? Megugi is paying today. Hey! When Hikari and Yui chuckle at my expense before dragging me out to lunch. Lunch? It's morning! Uh, now it's afternoon. After we stuffed our faces with food, the three of us returned to class. The rest of the afternoon was filled with a tour of the school grounds and an introduction to optional subjects that we could enroll in. All in all, it was a pretty full-on day, even though our actual core classes hadn't begun yet. The, student, the teachers wrapped up the day at about 3 p.m., telling us to go on our merry way and get some rest for tomorrow. Hikari offered to walk home with me, so we said goodbye to Yui, who was heading in the opposite direction. Before long, Hikari and I found ourselves out front of my place. So, all in all, what did you think of your first day? I'm liking it so far, even though we haven't started learning any magic yet. Yes, well, from tomorrow on, it's classes as normal, so you best be prepared. I don't want to catch you clacking and letting your grades drop. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll do my best. Thanks! By the way, what do you think of Yui? Oh, by the way, what do you think of Yui? Uh, she's not going to replace you. Daddy blushes a deep crimson. Oh, yeah! Look at that! What just happened there? Oh, come on! Give me some... Can I see the affection? I... Why are you even talking about Megugi? You're so silly sometimes. Hikari's affection has increased by two. What are the other options there, then? Hold up. Let me see. I want to see. She's nice. Oh, she didn't like that! I suppose so. So, she is a little hard to talk to, don't you think? With people like Yui, you never know what they're thinking. It might be best to be careful around her. I give Hikari a nod, though I'm not too worried. I've seen a side of Yui that Hikari hasn't seen. Even if that side is just underwear, at the very least, I know Yui can let her guard down. Okay, well, she didn't like that at all. Let me see. Did it actually do anything? I don't see it yet. I wanted to see- I wanted a visual indicator other than that. How about- she's a little weird. Wow, what was that? Yeah, she is. She needs to live in her own world. Increased by one? Okay. Let's go- let's go with she's not gonna replace you because it increases it by two. Anyway, I think I should have an early night. We need to be up bright and early tomorrow. I don't want to repeat the performance of you being late. Roger that. I'll set my alarm extra early. Make sure you do. Gotti beams her familiar smile and then skips away. See you tomorrow, classmate. I wave sheepishly as Hikari goes on her way. I should head inside too and rest up. After all, tomorrow is another school day. Tuesday! For some reason, I'm much more energetic this morning. Maybe it's because I have a clear idea of what's in store for today. Uh, did it show up now? No, the infection hasn't show- <sighs> Bullshit. Page up and page down, okay. Now, middle click hides the user interface. Right click accesses the game menu. Okay. Cool. Maybe it's because I have a clear idea what, of what's in store for today, and I had a pretty good day yesterday. I wake up on time, brush my teeth, and even took a shower. Silky clean! Silky clean? That's a... <laughs> that's a weird way to put it. After putting on my brand new academy uniform, my phone beep booped a nice tune to let me know about an incoming text message. I checked the screen and my eyes were assaulted by a hailstorm of animated emoji. Good morning, sleepyhead! Mom had to leave early for work today. I don't want to eat breakfast alone. Can I come have breakfast with you? Yes, no? Well, there's no doubt that this is from Hikari. She always texts like this. I heave a sigh and send her a one-letter reply. No. Before I can even put my phone down, a reply pops up on the screen. Mimi, be nice to me. Classic Hikari. 
A second reply follows. By the way, I'm outside. <laughs> Seriously? I didn't know her so well. I swear this girl has issues with boundaries. I head towards the front door and open it up. I'm greeted by a gentle breeze. The fresh spring air is crisp this morning and feels nice on my skin. Hikari is standing there, glaring angrily at her phone. A single cherry blossom petal is stuck in her hair. Can't believe you don't want me over for breakfast. Next time I won't ask. I'll just show up. Uh, that's pretty much the same as right now. Shh. I don't want to hear it. Now move out of the way. I'm making us pancakes. Well, I can't complain about that. Hikari's pretty good at making pancakes, even if she just uses the pre-made mix from the store. The pre-made mix is better than anything, okay? It's so much easier. And making it from scratch. Making it from scratch doesn't... It's fine, but it's like... Why do that when you can just get the pre-made stuff? Scotty heads into the kitchen and starts humming as she prepares breakfast. I decide to sit down at the table and just wait for Hikari to expend her energy. It doesn't take her too long to finish cooking. When she's done, she brings two plates of delicious smelling pancakes to the table. Hala! Pancakes a la Hikari! My family's secret recipe. You bought the pre-made mix from the store, didn't you? Uh, yes, but I added sugar. Sugar. It's a secret ingredient. Don't add sugar. You don't need to add sugar. Why are you adding sugar? The, the way that the, the mix is, you don't add stuff like sugar to it. It'll make... You ha you'll have to like actually make adjustments to the mix itself if you're going to add sugar, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. No guarantee it's going to come out right. I poke my tongue out of her and dig in. Fair enough, the pancakes are good. Nice and fluffy. I doubt it. Somehow, all the instant food Hikari makes it taste way better than when I make it myself. Maybe she adds sugar to everything? Even instant noodles. I mean, that, that's fine. Adding sugar to instant noodles is fine. Just don't do it to fucking pancake mix. Hikari has a mouthful of food when she decides to tell me one of her trademark weird stories. I had a dream about you last night. We were together walking through a dark and eerie forest. I was so scared, but you were brave. You told me that no one could hurt me as long as you were around. So that made me feel better until we ran into an evil witch. The witch said, Eat those cauldron of boiled mushrooms or I'll place a wicked curse on you. You refused to eat this disgusting concoction. Sue, so the... Witch pulled out her wand and pointed it at you. Zap! Boom! Tazam! You transformed into a gross mushroom. The witch cackled and disappeared into the darkness. I looked into your disgusting mushroom face and saw that you still had eyes and a mouth. Even as a mushroom, you still had your usually your usual dopey look. It made me really happy that you were still yourself. Fair dream, right? Yep. But it got me thinking. If you turned into a talking mushroom, what would you do with yourself? Oh, we have another choice. Um, I'd wait until you ate me, only amount of time until you got hungry. That's so mean. I'd never eat you. Well, at least I don't think I would. Wait, what do the op other options do then? Let's increase that affection. Oh. Alright, I guess it was a stupid question. Okay. I had to find a nice hot spring and have a soak until it became soupy. Wow, she likes that one? <laughs> That's just the kind of silly answer I was hoping for. The goddess affection has increased by one. You always know how to answer my random questions. Thanks, Megugi. Where the Come on! Can I see? Can I get a visual indicator on this screen? Hikari and I both finished eating. It was a good breakfast, that's for sure. Though, I can't help but feel a little sleepy after packing my face full of food. Hikari must be feeling the same way because she begins to yawn. The little cherry blossom petal that was stuck in her hair flutters down and lands on her empty plate. Oh, look! I'm so happy that the cherry blossoms are in season again. This is my favorite time of year. The trees look so pretty. Hikari's face turns. Red and she blesses. Blesses? Blushes. <laughs> oh, flowers in the mind. I'm glad we get to go to school together in the springtime. It's such a wonderful dream come true. I return Hikari's smile and have to admit, I feel the same way she does. It really is a nice time of year and the perfect season for a new beginning. Oh, snap! 
he has to get going or we'll be late. Well, here we go again. The mad rush to get to school on time, even though I woke up early this morning. If we're late today, at least I can place the blame on Hikari's absurd mushroom dream story. We grab all our stuff and hastily make our way to the door. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Checking on the health of the stream. It's still going. It's still going. It's still good. Oh. Wait, I forgot. I accidentally skipped through something, I think. Standing next to the school gate is a familiar face from yesterday. Oh, good morning. I get the feeling she was waiting for us here. Too nervous to venture into school alone. Luckily, Hikari and I managed to get here just in time. Yui is holding a nicely decorated box in her hands. I assume it's a bento lunch box. Um, I... I made some sweets for us to share today. Would you be interested in meeting up for lunch? Yukari literally jumped with joy. Sweets? I love sweets. Let's have lunch together. I nod and smile. Thanks, Yui. That sounds like a good idea. Yui's face turns red and she shyly lowers her head. Uh, I'm glad. I'll look forward to it. But for now, we need to get to class. March, march! We make our way to our first class. Good morning, new students, and welcome to your first magical history class. My name is Isolin Arcane. I'll be your teacher for this class. It is my duty to ensure you pass your exams and move on to become second year students. As I'm sure you can tell, oh, from my accent. Fuck, I don't know how to do a Brazilian accent. As I'm sure you can tell from my accent, I am not originally from Japan. No, I was born in Brazil, a country that many of you will know is famous for its culture of magic and wonder. I can't... What is a Portuguese accent? I'm not doing it right. Wait, maybe if I get Google Translate to do it, it'll, it'll give me, like... Maybe. Let me see. Let me, pop, let me just add that in for a second. Uh, let's see. We're going from Portuguese. Portuguese. No, Portuguese, and then we'll do it. As you can tell from my accent, I am not originally from Japan. I am... I am from Brazil. Okay, let me see if it'll actually say it in that accent. From my accent. Japan. I am from Brazil. As you can tell from my accent. Accent. Originally from Japan. From Brazil. <laughs> Maybe I can do that. Let's see. As I'm sure you can tell from my accent. Accent. I am not originally from Japan. No, I was born in Brazil. Brazil. A country that many of you will know is famous for its culture of magic and wonder. Indeed, many famous magical girls have emerged from Brazil over the years. It is safe to say that Brazil is second only to Japan. In terms of the amount of magical girls it produces. Magical girls, as I'm sure you know, have existed for centuries. Without them, the world would surely fall into disrepair. After all, it is a magical girl's duty to banish evil in all its forms. Three minute ad break. A three minute break from this awful action I'm putting on.
the... I'm just trying to get... <laughs> trying to see if I can get Google Translate to also do this. Magical... Magical girls, as you know. As you... as you know. Magic... <laughs> what? Magical girls, as you know. <laughs> this is impossible. I don't know how to do this accent. I'm gonna try and do it anyway, just cause... I only have so many voices. Adding an accent helps differentiate them a lot. <laughs> And break is ending now. Okay. Brazil. However, I am not here to teach you about banishing evil. I am here to teach you about the origins of magical girls. Now, before we start out where we all came from, it might be a good idea to examine where we are now. In today's world, evil is a rare thing to come across. Because of that, the average magical girl spends the majority of her time in contributing to society instead of engaging in combat. There are currently three jobs that are considered to be the most popular among magical girls. They are in order of popularity, musical idol, doctor, and finally teacher. You might be wondering why these three jobs are the most popular. Well, I think I can explain the reasons behind that. Many magical girls pursue careers as musical idols. I'm sure you're all familiar with some of the famous idols on the music charts at this moment. Perfume, Dari Pamu Pamu. Ah, uh, many others. <laughs> AKB48. Because of their ability, magical girls are able to entertain like no other. Some idols use their power to put on grandiose shows with fireworks and lights, while others put their skills to use to enhance the singing voice or provide produce music without instruments. Magical girls with supportive or healing abilities tend to tackle careers as doctors. Their unique powers make patients feel better again in no time. This is a noble career choice and makes a positive impact on many people's lives. Lastly, becoming a teacher is a noble pursuit. Much like myself, we use our knowledge of the magical arts to help mold the youth of the future. During your time here at the academy, you'll likely ask yourself over and over again what you aim to do once you graduate. Picking any of the three professions I've talked about today is an excellent choice, but be aware, these jobs are in high demand and you'll have a lot of competition. No. Isolene continues on with her lesson. I'm definitely fascinated by her words and her incredibly weird accent. But Hikari's pancake breakfast is taking its toll on me and making me very, very drowsy. I did my best to stay awake throughout the rest of the lesson. The bell rings for lunch. When we exit the classroom to head to lunch, I feel a gentle tug at my shoulder. I turn to look and my eyes meet Yui's. Hi. Oh, hey! Did you enjoy that class? Yes. Very interesting. I must have written 20 pages of notes. 
20, 20 pages? How can you write so much in our first lesson? I'm not sure. I think I just write quickly. How many pages of notes did you write? Uh, maybe one? Yui looks at me with disappointment. Well, if you need to look over my notes, you're more than welcome. I smile and nod. Hikari is the last person to shuffle out of the classroom. She's mumbling something about wanting to become a musical idol and not a doctor. Hey, Hikari, you okay? She looks taken aback. I'm fine. I was just chatting to the teacher about which career path I should take. Already? It's the second day of class and you're already thinking about your career? Well, of course. I can't just drift aimlessly. I need to have a goal. You should start thinking about your future too, Mikugi. Nah, I'm good. Yui giggles a little. Hikari looks flustered, but I can tell she doesn't want to get into a heated argument in front of Yui. Hikari changes her demeanor completely when she sees the box of sweets Yui showed off this morning. She sidles up to Yui, a devious expression crossing her face. Hey, Yui. Wanna share some sweets with us? I roll my eyes at Hikari's predictable behavior. To say she has a sweet tooth is an understatement. To Yui's credit, she just smiles and nods. You brought these sweets for all of us. I'm looking- I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Both. <laughs> Jackpot! Let's go find some way to eat! Gadi dashes off, practically dragging you and I behind her. We rush at full speed through the academy's winding hallways until we reach the cafeteria. Gadi takes one look inside and sees that it's jam-packed full of noisy students. Without missing a beat, she continues on, still dragging us behind her. We hit a stairwell and she jumps up two stairs at a time. I try to ask where we're going, but she ignores me completely. After we bound up another couple of stairwells, Hikari throws a door open and we spill out onto the rooftop. It's completely silent up here. No other students in sight. Perfect! This could be our lunch hangout. It's not bad, I have to admit. There's a few places to sit and the air is nice and fresh up here. There's a couple of birds perching in the ledge, minding their own business. One hoots at Hikari, just a little too close. Now, Yui, what do you have for us? She's salivating at the simple thought of the sweets Yui brought. Um... Yui opens up the beautifully wrapped box she's been tucking underneath her arm. She removes the lid to real, reveal a neatly organized selection of homemade treats. Hikari's eyes dazzle as she tastes in the bounty before her. There are sweet rice cakes, red bean mochi balls, green tea flavored candies, chocolate drizzled chestnuts, and a few slices of fresh watermelon. Yui! make all these? Yes, well, except the watermelon, of course. Everything looks amazing! I can't believe it. I have to try one of everything. I just have to! Yui starts to take Hikari's greed as a compliment and she smiles proudly. She offers the box to Hikari, officially giving her the go-ahead to jump in. I wait for Hikari to finish grabbing a fi few fistfuls of sweets before I selectively pick out the best-looking mochi balls and chocolate chestnuts. Thanks, Yui. Everything looks really good. Yui smiles again, possibly even more than she did for Hikari. I bite into a mochi ball and let the sweet re red bean paste fill my mouth. Huh? It went off again for no reason. God damn it. I got excited thinking that someone had donated. The flavor is incredible. It's unlike anything I've tasted before. Yui must have a real knack for making sweets. This is amazing, Yui. Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, I'm more than happy to share. You two are my newest friends, so I'm glad I can make something you both like. I chomp on a few chestnuts and take a look over at Hikari. She has chocolate all over her face and watermelon juice dripping from the tip of her nose. I just shake my head and continue to enjoy the treats. Yui doesn't seem to be eating anything, just smiling and watching me enjoy myself. At first it seemed weird that she didn't want to eat anything, but when I really think about it, she probably tes taste tests most of this stuff and gets sick of it easily. I don't give it any more thoughts. When the box of, when the box of sweets is completely empty, I let out a sigh of satisfaction and take a seat on an old milk crate. Thanks so much, Yui. I really enjoyed the sweets. You're very welcome, Mikugi. I nudge Hikari to encourage her to thank Yui, but she seems to be in a food coma and is fast asleep. There's still a lot of chocolate on her face. Sorry about Hikari. She can be a bit herself. Oh, it's not a bother. I can tell she liked the food, so for me, that's the best things I can get. Where did you learn to make stuff like that? Hmm? 
I don't know, to be honest. I guess I just read a lot and pick up things here and there. No one ever really showed me how to make sweets. Interesting. Well, I look forward to having some more next time. Of course! Um, Miss Boogie, do you have a boyfriend? Or a girlfriend? I'm shocked by Yui's sudden forwardness. I can't believe this shy girl just straight up asks if I'm seeing anybody. I, um, uh, well, I... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you don't have to answer me. I was just trying to make conversation. No, it's okay. No need me to be sorry. The truth is, I don't have either. I'm single right now. Oh, is that so? Then what do you look for in a person? Oh, shit. Oh, look, it's another choice. I like tall, fit girls. I like girls that are comfortable being themselves. I like shy girls with glasses. That was only a green. The other... Let me look at the other options. That's also just a green? Oh, and that's heartbreak. Okay. I guess I'll just go with the first one, huh? Oh? Really? I didn't think that's what you'd be into. Use affection that's increased by one. Well, thank you for telling me. Just so you know, I'm single too, and I thought it would be nice to find a partner during my time at the academy. That's pretty much my goal too. I want to have a girlfriend by New Year's Eve. It's my ultimate dream. <laughs> okay. Yui grins widely. A partner by New Year's Eve. That's a good dream. Maybe I'll make it my goal too. Hmm, Yui seems to be kind of into me. I wonder if I'm reading this situation right? Though I can't really make a move with Hikari pretending to be asleep right next to us. And it would probably be a good idea to get to know Yui better before I ask her to be my girlfriend. I'll give it some time. At the very least, she seems to like me a lot. That's a great start. Yui and I are smiling broadly at each other when we hear the bell resound throughout the school. Uh, oh, oh, it looks like our lunch break is over. Well, we better get to our next class. I shake Hikari and she awakens abruptly. Huh? Ah, what? What's happening? Wake up, sleepyhead. We need to go to our next class. Oh no! But I haven't had a proper lunch yet. I've only eaten sweets. Well, you should have thought about that before you devoured your weight in chocolate. <laughs> Yui and I laugh at Hikari's chocolate face expression. We all head downstairs on our way to the next class. <laughs> at no point does she wipe off her face. She's just gonna be like that. And everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck? Why is her face covered in chocolate? <laughs> Ah, finally home. The rest of the day went by pretty quickly. I ended up taking Yui's advice and started writing more notes during our other classes. Now I have a good two or three written pages. Once school wrapped up for the day, I said goodbye to Hikari and Yui and re returned home. I'm feeling pretty exhausted. I guess it's what two days of classes will do to you when you're not used to studying. I suppose I'll get some dinner and have an early night. After all, it's only Wednesday tomorrow. I have to get through the rest of the school week before I can relax. Wednesday, my dudes. Morning routine. Use the time before school each morning to prepare for the day ahead. From your bedroom, you can view the calendar and check your friend's schedules. Plan your day according to the schedule for you want to spend time with. Extra morning routine options will open up later in the game. Oh. Damn. Now we get a choice. Okay, well. Check calendar, check schedule. Okay, today is alchemy. Uh, Yui. Scotty's affection is at 3%. Whoa! What, a, what opens up with 100%? I wonder. Scotty starts of the day. Buying items from a shop doesn't take time. Do your shopping before other activities. Oh! Okay. Do I make money? Or am I just gonna have... How do I... Oh, look! Finally, it updated! 3% for Hikari and 1% for Yui. Next schedule. Um, evening, Hikari's gonna be in class. And then at night, she's gonna be at Cafe Shiba. And then Yui's gonna be in the library and in the forest. Why the forest? Why are you going to the forest at night? <laughs> Bit of a freak thing to do. Um, I guess I'll spend time with Yui. Wait. What did it say I should be doing? Oh, it's 
four times. Hmm. Well, I checked the schedule. That's all I can do, so... Library in the forest? A nervous tension is in the air when I enter the school lab this morning. According to Hikari, we'll be having our first alchemy class. The teacher is supposedly somewhat crazy, so we have to look for we have that to look forward to. Why are you calling your ableism? Stop calling people crazy. What the fuck? I'm crazy. I managed to grab a seat between Sadi and Yui, like usual. As soon as all of the other students are settled, the classroom door bur bursts open and a man marches in. Barges in. Good morning, students. I'm your alchemy teacher, Henry Steiner. You'll all do as I say, and, I, wait, and that way no one will get blown to pieces. <laughs> the students are silent. No one dares laugh along with the teacher. None of us can tell if he's serious or not. Is there a chance he'll get blown up during this class? What have I gotten myself into? The man before us looks like some sort of mad scientist. His lab coat is torn and burned, and a maniacal glint keeps appearing in its eyes. You're all new to the academy, so I will go ahead and assume none of you have any inkling as to the true nature of alchemy. Alchemy is not magic. Alchemy is not science. Alchemy is a precise art. It can only be practiced by those who dedicate themselves to it fully. You might ask, why must we learn alchemy if it's not magic? I'll tell you why. Without alchemy, you magical girls wouldn't have any means of defending yourself should your powers fail you. The greatest magical girls in the world have used alchemy to turn the tides of battles that their innate powers could not win. Imagine having the ability to forge me weapons for common. Imagine having the ability to forge weapons from common ingredients. Imagine having the option to brew potions so potent that one sip could vanquish your foe in an instant. Fuck. These are the doors alchemy will open for the cunning magical girl. Having an arsenal of options in combat is always a good thing. With all of that said, I want it to be known that most of you will fail this class. Most of you will not have the dedication, the perseverance, the master alchemy. Why are they offering a class that most people will fail? That sucks. However, I still expect you all to do your best. I will accept absolutely no less than that. This guy is intense. I've never had a teacher like him before. It's, for, it's painfully clear that he's passionate about his subject, but how do I get the feeling he's seen as, as guinea pigs and not students? I don't know, you're pretty judgmental. Before we begin brewing potions or forging items, you must understand the very basic principles of alchemy. Can anyone tell me the names of the three components that must be included in every single alchemy recipe? The class is silent. When I think nobody is going to answer this impossible question, Yui timidly raises her hand. Ah oh, yes, you there. Can you answer the question? Um, yes sir. The names of the three components used in every alchemy recipe are the base, the solvents, and the catalyst. Haha, bingo. Well done, young one. Yui beams at the teacher's praise. I'm genuinely surprised she knew the answers to that question. Although, being that she's fairly studious, I suppose it's not that out of the ordinary for her to know such a thing. The base, the solvent, the catalyst, three components that together form the foundation of every alchemy recipe. In order to successfully synthesize an item or brew a potion using alchemy, you need those three components. The components themselves can take many forms. Even some everyday items can be used in alchemy. Just because an item doesn't have special properties, it doesn't mean it can be used. It can't be used in a powerful recipe. In future lessons, I will go into detail about finding alchemy components in the world around us. For now, I command you to open your notebooks and start writing the following. The rest of the lesson continued reasonably smoothly. Smoothly. Even though nothing got blown up today. The students didn't seem to let their guard down for one second. I don't think I'll ever forget Mr. Steiner's eccentric attitude. Before I knew it, my third day of school was over. Daddy and Yui said farewell at the gate. There's still a bit of time before it gets dark. Maybe I should use my time after school to make the most of my new school life. But what can I do? 
I could look up in the school grounds, go into town, or spend some time studying. Or I could try and meet some girls. My thoughts drifted back to yesterday when I shared lunch with Yui and Hikari on the rooftop. Just so you know, I'm single too, and I thought it would be nice to find a partner during my time at the academy. Hey, that's right. You and I both want to have a partner by New Year's Eve. I really should make that my ultimate goal. I don't want to ring in another New Year solo. If I really think about it, attending the academy is the best opportunity I'll ever have to meet a, a girl. After all, this place is jam-packed full of cute magical girls. So, I'm going to do it. I'll find someone special, someone I can call my love. I'll use my time here effectively and meet the girl of my dreams. Starting today, you can make the most of your school life. Go out and meet as many people as you can, form ongoing relationships, and build trust with the people you care about. Select the travel option to explore. The world is not open to you when you seize every opportunity. During the evening and night, you can choose activities to participate in. Some actions take up time. Performing an action in the evening will progress time to night. And activities at night will move time forward to the next day. Actions that take time dating or spending time with girls, reading books, studying magic, brewing potions, exploring the forest. Free actions, traveling, shopping, giving gifts, talking to characters, perform as many of these actions as you like. Oh, okay. Uh, check. No, check talent. I mean, check schedule. Scotty's affection is at uh, 3% still, uses at 1%. Travel somewhere. Bedroom, school gate, classroom, hallway, library. Can I buy things? I have nothing in my inventory. Potions, cash, 500 again. Hmm. Travel somewhere. School gate, classroom, hallway, library, bedroom. Hallway? Oh! Chat with Marceline! Who are you? You wanna chat with me? Um, okay. I'm not really sure what you can offer in terms of conversation since you're a newbie. To be honest, I only volunteer to help the first year, first year students because I have too much knowledge to keep all to myself. But you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to sound so harsh. You're okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, you're a first year student, right? I can give you info. What do you want to know? The flow of time. Oh, okay. Traveling is a free option. Shopping is too. Giving gifts. Fucking just care. Okay. Oh, wait. How about the morning routine again? Let me look at that. Prepare for the day ahead. Okay. Cancel. Come back sometime if you can be bothered. I get my ears to the ground, so I'm always learning new info. Go somewhere else. Get away from this bitch. <laughs> okay, that's Hikari. Wait. I can talk to her. Oh, no. Can't just talk to her. I have to spend time with her. School gate again? Travel somewhere. Library? Reading books. You can borrow books from the school library, but only one book at a time. You can read books at home during your free time. When you finish reading a book, you will gain a significant boost to a key attribute. View your current items in the inventory menu. Uh, who is this? Use the library services. I like the white hair. I always like white hair characters. I'm flattered that you would take the time to converse with me. Truth be told, most students pay me no heed. It's heartwarming to have some company. Though I've only worked at this academy for a short time, I'm very familiar with it. My own dear wife studied here once upon a time, and what an impression she made upon these hollowed halls. She reached the top of her class before graduating, and was awarded with an illustrious golden star pin, the highest honor any student can achieve. Ah, oh, but it was quite some time ago. Can I borrow a book? Book of Magic 1? Read to increase your magic attributes. Book of Alchemy 1. Book of Perception 1. Book of Expertise 1. Per Book of Perception. Uh, I don't have any gifts to give. Sorry, bitch. 
Spend time with Yui? Sure. Yui's affection for me isn't high enough to ask her on a date. I should try to get her affection up level up to 10% before asking her out. If I hang out with her anyway and increase her affection, this will take up time. I hang out with Yui and discuss a few different topics. Yui gets a little nervous when we start talking about our hopes and dreams. Yui's affection has increased by one. Only one? Improve your mind and body by raising your key attributes. Improving these key attributes will make you more desirable to other people. There are many ways to build up your attributes. Reading books is a start. Okay. Magic, alchemy, expertise, perception. Travel somewhere else. Excuse me, sorry. Did not mean for that to come up with the microphone. <laughs> uh, full gate. Check the schedule, check, check schedule. Nighttime. I haven't been to a Cafe Shiva yet, so it's not. Using the potions will help increase affection, money, or the alchemy ingredients you find. It will help me increase money. Uh, and the forest is not accessible to me, so I can just read a book. I currently have book uh, perception one. Reading it will increase my perception attributes. But I haven't started the book yet. It may take some time to complete. There are three large chapters. Yep, read it. I dive into the book and devote all my attention to reading. Time ticks by as I turn page after page. I'm starting to get sleepy, so I'll stop here for now. There are two chapters remaining. Time to get some sleep. Thursday. I've got some time before school. What should I do? Check the schedule. Oh, they're both unavailable today. Cutie star sees all. The calendar. Today is practical magic. Right? Yeah. Go straight to school. Good morning. Good morning. The girls are waiting for me at the school gate. Apparently, Hikari is excited about something because she has a crazy grin on her face. Today is the day I've been waiting for. It's Practical Magic Day! Hmm, what's that? <sighs> Are you serious? Magical, pla ma Practical Magic Class is where we actually get to go out of the classroom and use magic. Oh, really? Yes, really. Jeez, didn't you pay any attention to Miss Otsuka's first class? Hmm, which one is Miss Otsuka again? She's the Opai teacher. She's got them big titties. You were staring at them? Daddy pouts. He hates it when I act like I haven't been paying attention. Miss Otsuka told us to call her Sadami on the first day of school. She's the one with the big, um... Oh yes, Sadami Otsuka, our homeroom teacher. How could I forget my mature, well-endowed crush? <laughs> anyway, Sadami, I mean, Miss Otsuka. She told us all about the classes we'll be taking. And the one that sounded the most exciting was Practical Magic. Scotty's eager grin returns. I don't doubt that she's been looking forward to this class. I suppose it does sound kind of cool. I'll be able to see what all the girls are capable of. So, I don't know if I'll be able to perform any magic. Well, shall we head to class? Sure. I start to make my way towards our classroom with Hikari grabs my shoulder. No, no, no. No! We're going to be studying mag practical magic outside on the school field. An outside class? But there are bugs outside. Sunlight. Oh, will we grow up? It's nice being outside. It's sunny and warm, and the springtime air smells so beautiful. But... Shut it. You're coming with us. Yui laughs and falls along as Hikari drags me towards the school field. Good morning, students. Gather around. Gather around. How are we all this morning? I know this is a very early class. A lot of you are yawning, so I do hope you're getting enough sleep. My name is Aya Yoshida. I'm your practical magic teacher. I hope we can learn a lot together. Being outside in the school field and looking at Miss Yoshida in a track outfit makes me feel like I'm back in high school attending PE class. I'm half expecting to get hit in the head by a football at any moment. What a weird feeling. In this class, you will learn to harness your raw magical energy. You are all capable of great feats of magic. That's why you're at this academy after all. A magical girl is capable of drawing upon the energy within herself and focusing into a and focusing it into a powerful force that can alter the fabric of reality. Magical energy can create fireballs, conjure illusions, heal the injured, shield the weak, or even stop time in its tracks. 
Hikari turns to me at these words. I'm reminded of the time I froze a falling glass in midair. I suppose my magic can stop time? The magical girl's disposition directly affects the kind of magic she can cast. Chances are, you all have dabbled with your magical abilities. You should all be familiar with the type of magic you are capable of producing. I'm going to ask a few of you now. Please share with the class what you have learned about your own magic. I'll go first to give you an idea. I'm Aya. My magic lets me summon mystical field of light that can dazzle onlookers. This is classed as defensive magic, and I developed it during my due to my kind and caring personality. Now, who can go next? Ah, you there. Hikari gasps when Miss Yohida indicates towards her. She steps forward shyly. Um, my name is Hikari. I'm able to use healing magic. I first discovered this when I broke my arm falling down the staircase. I'm not sure what my personality is, though, <laughs> so I don't know why I have healing magic. Miss Yoshida nods and gives Hikari a round of applause. Thanks for sharing, Hikari. Your healing magic sounds wonderful. In my experience, it is usually those with thoughtful, generous personalities that acquire healing magic. Well done. Hikari steps back and lines up next to me again. She looks almost ashamed, though, as though she is embarrassed to have healing magic. The next student called upon is Yui. She looks even more scared than Hikari did, but she takes a brave step forward anyway. Oh, I, I'm Yui. Uh, my magic is a bit unreliable, and I haven't quite figured out what it is yet. All I know is that there have been a couple of times where strange things have happened to me. I can't really explain it, sorry. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. Well, no trouble, Yui. Please don't fret. Some girls take longer to understand their powers, and there's no shame in that. We will help you discover your powers together. Yui seems to take comfort in Miss Yoshida's words. A few of the other girls in the class all share their powers. After a bit of time, Miss Yoshida's finger points to me. Guess I'm up. I step forward. You seem to be a very special case, Nikuki. Please, would you share with the class some information about your magic powers? Well, I've only ever been able to use my power once, and I don't think I had any control over it, but I was able to freeze an object in time? You froze an object in time? Yes, it was a falling glass. It didn't just stop in midair. It literally froze the contents of the glass and stopped falling. See how peculiar. And how would you describe your personality? A million adjectives flashed through my mind at the speed of light. I grabbed one at random and spit it out. Lazy. A few of the students laugh. Even Miss Yoshida cracks a smile, though I can tell she's trying not to not crack up completely. Lazy, my my. Well, I suppose I'll have to put some thought into the reasons behind your magic. Very good, Megugi. I can't quite get a reading on Miss Yoshida's reaction to my magic. But do you think I'm ordinary? Is the ability to freeze objects in time a common magical power? Or could it be something more? Can I be the destined hero born to rise up and conquer an evil demon lord by my ability to stop glasses falling in midair? Miss Yoshida continues the lesson. Most of the students are quite attentive, though I can't tell if some people are getting easily distracted because we're outside. The lesson wraps up with Miss Yoshida telling us we'll begin our actual magic, pra magic practice next week. A disappointed grumble erupts from the class and the sound of the school bell sends us on our way. Megugi, the greatest wizard of all time. Absolutely! Hello, JF. Thank you for joining the stream. Tomorrow is Friday. Can you believe the weekend has? Can you believe the week has nearly ended? Nope. Seems too good to be true. Uh, I know you act like you're not impressed, but I can tell you're enjoying classes so far. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I am. To be honest, it's pretty exciting learning about this stuff. Good. I'm really happy we're attending school together, and we even met a new friend this week. Me, Yui. Where is she anyway? Huh, I don't know. Doesn't she normally meet us here before going home? Yeah, wonder if she got caught up somewhere. Well, don't sweat it. We'll see her tomorrow after all. Yup. You wanna walk home together? Maybe not today. I've got some things I'd like to do. Oh, okay. Maybe next time? Well, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. School is finished for the day. How should I spend the evening? Hmm. Check schedule. Oh yeah, they're both unavailable. Building attributes. Oh, let's go to the library. Is that another book? Damn. Yeah, I just 
just gotta go home, I guess. Go home. Read a book. Oh, I worked at nighttime already? Damn. I was hoping I'd be able to finish this book tonight. Only one chapter remaining. Time to get some sleep. Ah, 420. What a great day, huh? Joke, joke, joke. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, let's check the spreadsheet calendar. What's going on today? Oh, it's just homeroom. Next schedule. Okay. Yui is in the library. Go straight to school. When are we going to meet the other girls? God damn it. Four more spots. What did everyone think of their first week? I don't know, big titty sensei. I do hope you're all learning a lot. I remember my- I remember way back when I was a student. I was overwhelmed by all the knowledge my teachers wanted to share. I have a good feeling that you're all going to make wonderful magical girls. And I'll make it my sworn duty to help each and every one of you. Oh, and I also want to introduce someone else that can help you. This is Marceline. Marceline is a second year student, though she is your senior. Is she the next girl? Christ, not the man. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> You're gonna want to tell Marceline to chill out, okay? She has no chill. Good to meet you. Marceline is highly, has kindly volunteered to offer guidance to the school's first year students. She will be at your disposal during school hours. Since I'm your senior, I know much more than any of you, so I guess I'll help you out. I can give you information about school life, classes, extracurricular activities, whatever. You can find me in the first floor hallways whenever you need assistance. Thank you, Marceline. Hello, I'm from Indonesia. My name is Buya Hamka Roberts. Hello! Nice to meet you. Buya? Thanks for attending the stream from Indonesia. For the rest of today's class, I'd like to go over what you've learned during the week. The class goes on. Oh, Yui, you waited for us today. Oh, hello, Megugi. Hello, Hikari. Yo! I'm sorry I left yesterday without saying goodbye. I had something urgent I needed to attend to. You're good? Great! Is everything okay? Yes, everything is wonderful. There's no need to worry. I had a great week thanks to both of you. I'm so happy that I've made some friends here. Me too! It's been such a fun week. Should we all walk home together? Oh, I... I actually live here now at the dorms. Whoa, really? I had no idea. Sorry I never told you sooner. Actually, the reason I left early yesterday was to finish setting everything up in my room. I had some new furniture delivered, so it finally feels like home. Well, that's pretty cool. It must be nice to have your own place. It's not bad, I mean. I was in the tiles of the house to get the tall bones of the city of Jakarta cooling the air. Cool. I mean, there are other students around, but my room is private. Private, huh? Do you not have your own place, Hikari? No, I still with my mother. I can't wait to get my own place, though. I see. And what about you, Megugi? I have a small apartment in town all to myself. Lucky you. Hikari seems to be moping. I think she's a bit envious that you and I have our own places while she still lives at home with her mom. Hikari, you're always welcome to visit my place, you know? And I'm sure Yui wouldn't mind having you over once in a while, too. Of course! It would be my pleasure. Hikari brightens up a little. Thank you! I must take- I might just take you up on that offer. <laughs> well, I'm off for now. Have a good evening, you two. Bye, Yui! See you later! Gotcha. Can we walk home together? Hmm, there's still some things I want to do. Rain check? Yeah, okay. I'll see you later. How should I spend the evening? Let's check that schedule. Uh, you always in the library. I guess I can go to the library. Anyone I can meet in the hallway besides fucking Marceline? Can I chat with Marceline? You ever visit Indonesia? No, nah, I've never been outside the United States. One of the other first year students asked me where to find the bathrooms. I told her that if she can't figure that out on her own, she doesn't deserve to be at this academy. 
So of course she starts crying and making a big scene. I told her I was sorry, then I took her hand and showed her where to go. After that, she smiles a little. Gosh, talk about embarrassing. Fucking Marceline. Flasher? Nah, there's no one there. I guess I can go to the library and talk to Yui. Use library services. Can I talk to the store? Before I came to work here, I spent some time in the Navy. That's actually where I met my dear wife. When she graduated the Academy, she joined the Navy. Her magic ability served our country well. Alas, the Navy brought us together, but it also separated us. After one fateful battle, I could take no more. I resigned and found myself here some years later. What? Okay. We that summer did not eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and what? Okay. Okay, I'll just talk to you, eh? Hang out. I hang out with Yui and we talk about our favorite movies. Yui slowly walks away when I go on an unstoppable rant about my favorite anime flicks. What did I do? Read a book. You're fasting? Oh, okay. Look at Perception 1 has been finished. Not sure what the perception does, but time to get some sleep. It is 421. Saturday. Ugh, my phone. What time is it? Oh, it's just a text message. Oh, MG, wake up. You're missing school. Just kidding. It's the weekend. I got you good. Anyway, Yui wants to go to the cafe. You should come with us. Yes, no? Scotty and her early morning text messages. What am I going to do with this girl? It might be fun to hang out with Yui and Hikari at a cafe. But still, I had to mess with Hikari at least a little bit. I quickly reply back, no. As usual, immediately after the message gets sent, I get a response. You meanie! You don't have a choice! Come meet us at Cafe Shiba! I send her back a serious reply and let her know I'll be there. Cafe Shiba? I think I've seen her in the walk over to school. Should be easy to get there. You're a weeboo? Okay. The wafting aroma of fine coffee invites me into the cafe as I approach. When I enter, I'm surprised to see that the place is fairly empty, but I immediately spot two girls at the table giving me a goofy wave. Aww, cute! It's still looking a little boob socky. This one's looking a little better. But I do like the outfit. Like, ooh, cute. Cute. Jeez, you took your time, didn't you? Yikes. Sorry, sorry. Good morning. Good morning, Yui. Good morning, Hikari. Huh. Have you ever been here before, Megugi? No, never. How about you? Ah, uh, yes. I come here all the time. I really like the coffee here. Plus, they always remember my order now. So it's less awkward to come here than to go anywhere else. It's a pretty cozy place. It'll be a good. It'll be a. Oh my God. It would be a cool idea to bring our books here and study. Oh, please, it's the weekend. Can we talk about studying some other time? <laughs> yes, let's just enjoy the weekend. Have you two ordered yet? So oh, these the the straps here. Look at the little bondage -y. It looks so uncomfortable. Are you comfortable wearing that? No, not yet. I can't decide. I I can't decide. I want to get a croissant, but I don't know if it will fill me up. Would it be better off getting an apple danish? Or will that not be enough either? Why don't you get one of each? One of each? I'm not made of money. Sheesh. I recommend, I recommend the strawberry parfait. It's wonderful. Parfait? For breakfast? You're my kind of girl, Yui. Before long, a waitress comes around to take our order. I'll have the strawberry parfait, please. Oh, and also my usual coffee. I'll have a strawberry parfait, too. And some chai tea, please. Ah, yes, tea tea. I'll get a croissant, an apple danish, a strawberry parfait, and a latte. Thanks. The waitress gets away and the girls look at me in shock. You're gonna eat all of that? How could you betray me? Oh, well, what did I do? You ordered all the things I couldn't decide between. You're a monster! 
Whoa, relax. I gotta bit everything so we can all share. Oh, that's really nice of you, Magoogie. Thank you so much. You don't have to thank me if you don't want to, Hikari. I can't believe you did such a nice, thoughtful thing. What's the catch? No catch, I promise. Just enjoy the food. Oh, well, thank you. After Hikari has finished grilling me about being generous, the waitress brings our order out. Yui is holding like a yawn as she sips her coffee from a gigantic mug. Is that your usual order, Yui? Yes. It's a bit big, I know. What's in it? It's a cappuccino with an extra shot of espresso. Wow, you must be so energetic if you drink that all the time. Actually, I'm kind of the opposite. Because I stay up so late, I need these in the morning just to function. Daddy looks at Yui quizzically. I can tell she wants to ask why Yui is always up late, but doesn't want to be intrusive. For once, I actually know something Hikari doesn't. I give her a smug grin. Yui step, stays up watching horror movies more often than not. Isn't that right, Yui? Yui nods gently. Wow, horror movies? I get goosebumps just saying those words. You must be really brave, Yui. Oh no, not really. I can be a bit of a scaredy cat. I have lots of trouble falling asleep after watching something scary. Hear noises and see things in the shadows that aren't there. Now, let me get this straight. You don't watch horror films because you're brave, but because you like scaring yourself? Hmm, something like that, I suppose. How odd! Oh, um, no offense. It's not that odd. I did the same thing. <laughs> it's just fun. Don't worry. I know, I have some strange habits. But what about you, Higari? What are your hobbies? Uh, I'm a bit like Megugi. I kind of just like watching anime and reading manga. I love manga too. I read all sorts of horror stories. <laughs> I don't think we would read the same kind of stuff. That's too bad. What kind of manga do you read? Nah, I can't tell you. You'll think I'm a little kid. Well, go on. You know my weird hobby. I won't judge you. Well, okay. My favorite manga series is Cutie Star. Cutie Star. A thoughtful expression crosses Yui's face. I can tell she's starting to remember something. Straining to remember something. Oh, I know Cutie Star. I used to watch the anime series on TV every morning before preschool. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see why you didn't want to tell me about it. It's okay. I know it's a children's series. I guess I never really grew out of it. Seeing Cutie Star fight evil and transform into a magical girl inspired me all through my childhood. I never let go of it when I got older because it was always so important to me. So I've always collected the manga books and watched the TV show for as long as I can remember. There's nothing wrong with collecting something that inspires you. In fact, I think it's great. I would love to sit down and watch Cutie Star with you sometime. But really? Oh, Yui, that means so much to me. Thank you. Maybe Megugi can join us too. I don't know a bigger fan of Cutie Star than Megugi. Oh, whoops. Hey, don't drag me down with you. My obsession with Cutie Star is private. The girls lose themselves in a fit of laughter. Guess there's nothing to do except let them tire themselves out. I roll my eyes and dig into the food in front of me. We all spend a couple of hours together at the cafe, laughing and having a good time. The waitress eventually brings the bill around. Scotty glances at it and her eyes widen. Oh no! I had no idea this place was expensive. I hardly have any money on me. Can't be that bad. Let me see the bill. Please, you're both exaggerating. We all had a couple of hot drinks and a little bit of food. Hmm. So Hikari did order an extra parfait and a melon soda, and then there were the free frills, which couldn't have been free. I snatch the bell and look at the fucking music! This goddamn music! I can't concentrate on anything when this shit is playing! What a weird bop! Well, it's not that bad. I mean, I won't be able to afford to eat for the rest of the week, but it's not the end of the world. Besides, the three of us split it. We'll cover it easily. I reach my wallet and notice something is a myth. A miss. Something or someone is missing. Yui. Where's Hikari? I... Yui? She says she had to go. But she thanks you for your generous contribution to her share of the bill. Betrayed. Yui, can we split the bill 50-50? <laughs> I would love to, but I only have a handful of change. I can cover my coffee at least. Yeah, thanks. Completely defeated, I tell the waitress I'll pay with my credit card. At the very least, I can then make repayments later on. Maybe I'll sell a kidney or two. You're, what? I thought you didn't have. I thought you didn't have any money. Your your wallet on you. You still have your. Oh, 
Oh, something or someone is missing. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I fucking misread it. Yui bows after I finish paying and thanks me for the meal. She heads out the door before I can even get so much as a chance to say goodbye. I walk outside and expect to find her Higari on the street, but they're nowhere to be found. Just as I'm feeling used and abused, I receive a text message. She only lets Hikari tell me she's sorry for leaving without paying. However, it's not Hikari. Yo, what's up? You chilling today? Uh, it's my good friend Sheen. He and I go way back. Though I haven't known him as long as Hikari, he's still one of my best friends. I met Sheen back in school when he was a bit of a troublemaker. He used to copy my notes in class and annoy me constantly by stealing my pen. I suppose after a while his annoying ways wore me down when we became friends. Before I get the chance to reply to his message, he buzzes me again. How's your new school? Are there lots of hotties? I shoot him back a quick message assuring him that there are indeed lots of hotties at the academy. Sweet! Yo, we gotta catch up. I have the day off tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> I have the day off work tomorrow, Keen. I agreed to meet up with him. It's been a while since we hung out. Dope! Can't wait. I'll come to your place in the morn. Peace! I put my phone away. I take one last look around the street to see if Hikari or Yui are still lurking around, but I don't see either of them. I guess I'll just head home for the day and relax. The sound of the doorbell is elegant and serene. I've always liked the little chime that rings out whenever someone comes to visit me. Then again, it's kind of annoying. I hate it and I'm going to remove it. Yo, open up the damn door. I'm cold out here. Looks like Sheen has arrived. I head over to the door and let him in. Hey, what's up? I glance past him and look outside. The sun is shining and a warm breeze is blowing. You said it was cold out there. What's the deal? Ah, it ain't cold. I just want to come in. I shake my head and give, and Sheen gives me his trademark stupid grin. I've missed you. Haven't seen you in ages. I've missed you too, man. How have you been? I've been so good. Raising dough every day. Oh, you've been making bread? Nah, dude. Making money. I got a job a few months back. Someone actually hired you? Did they meet you first? Shut up. I'm working at a convenience store. The job's not great, but the money's not great either. <laughs> so it's not great? Nah, it sucks. But any money is better than mo no money, you know? Besides, it's all just a stepping stone to bigger and better things. Oh yeah, what kind of things? But when I get together enough cash, I'll start my own company. Hmm, that's right. You always want to design your own clothes, right? Just do it right now. On your free time. You ha you're, you're currently... This is time that you could be spending designing clothes. Right now. Hell yeah. Shirts by Sheen. I'm gonna be Sheen shirts or... You'll get there, buddy. But congrats. I'm glad you're chasing your dreams. Thanks, dude. I knew you'd understand. So, like, tell me, what's it like going to an academy for magical girls? Are you the biggest nerd there? <laughs> all in all, it's pretty great. I even made a friend. Good job. Is, uh, is Hikari studying with you? Yeah, she's in all my classes. Right on. Hey, random question. I've seen the girls from your school walking around, walking home in the afternoon. How come everyone wears uniforms? That's what I was asking. I was like, what kind of fucking college requires students to wear uniforms like this? Like, I get the whole uniform thing during high school, but this is a tertiary education. Isn't this Magical Girl Academy more like a university? Exactly, dude. Well, she kind of explained this to me once. She said it's more like a training academy than a university. Like, like a military academy. So we all wear uniforms while we train. And it's something to do with discipline or something. Or maybe the aesthetic. Maybe they wanted the aesthetic of high school, but set in college. <laughs> because that is one of the biggest complaints people have, is that things are set in high school so often, but they're all, but there's so, many, uh, so much adult themes in those shows. So the people making this visual novel were like, how about we want the aesthetic of high school with the uniforms because it's cute, but... We want them to be uh, adults, so we're just going to make it a college and we're going to have them wear uniforms and then we're just going to say it's like, it's just whatever. <laughs> I respect that. 
actually. <laughs> Sounds deep, dude. I don't know about any of that, but the uniforms are hot at least. <laughs> yep, I saw that co response coming. <laughs> so, did you do any magic tricks yet? Nah. Jeez, I want results, and soon. We'll see. At the moment, I'm just happy to cruise along and learn what I can. You've got a maid, dude. Your folks pay your rent, and you get to go to school with hotties every day. You've got no idea what the real world is like for us working class citizens. What's your point? I think you need a little taste of the real world. You should get a part-time job to see what it's like to work for your money. Yeah, right. I've got enough on my plate as is. Is that so? Then what happens when you meet a cool chick and you want to take her on a date? Are you going to call your parents and ask for money? Well, um... You need to get your own finances in order so you can treat girls and have a good time. I hate to admit, but you may be right. Exactly. Sheen is always right. But finding a part-time job will be tough. I hardly have any free time with classes every weekday. I got you covered. The convenience store is hiring, and they love students because they can pay them next to nothing. You're really selling this place. I'm serious. Money is money. We can work together. It'll be dope. Hmm. Tell you what. I'll put in a good word for you with the boss man. I'll see if I can get, get you some flexible hours. If I do that, would you at least give it a shot? Yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. Bang! That's awesome! Sheen and McGoogie, working together just like the old days. I don't remember those old days, but whatever. Nah, you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm more of the new friend you made. Is she cute? She and I spent some more time together chatting playing some video games. It was really good to catch up with him again. She went home in the afternoon and I chilled out for the evening. I'm getting ready for bed when my phone goes off. Yo, I talked to the boss. He says you've got the job. You'll be on cash register with me. Is that sweet or what? Whew. That didn't take long. Looks like I've stumbled upon a part-time job. Best bit is, the hours are super flexible. You can basically just come in whenever you want and work. So come into the convenience store if you ever need to earn some cash. See you soon. You can now visit the convenience store in town. Working at the convenience store will allow you to earn money. Ah, earn, use money earned to purchase items from stores, such as gifts to give to girls. Blech. The amount of money you can you earn working is tied to expertise. Use your expertise to earn more money. Oh, that's what the expertise is for. Okay. Go straight to school. Check schedule. Classroom. Finished. Yeah, I gotta put this shit back. School hallways are abuzz with chatter this morning. A huge group of girls are crowded in the main corridor, black blocking my way to class. I can hardly even hear myself think with all the high-pitched squeals in the air. I start to think that maybe something bad has happened. Is someone injured? I begin to push through the swarm of students in an attempt to find the source of the commotion. The crowd gets thicker and thicker as I progress down the hallway. The senseless squeals have dissolved into hushed whispers, but I can make out some of the words. I can't believe she's here. She's so beautiful. I wonder what black she's The fear I had about this whole situation disappears when I realize the center of attention is just one girl standing in the middle of the crowd. Maybe she's a, an idol. A tall brunette in the same academy uniform as everyone else. Her class badge reveals her to be a, third year, a senior in her final year. Mio Kimura. I stumble forward into the vacant area the students are surrounding. The third year girl turns to look at me. Oh, a third, a three minute ad break for Twitch. That's a three minute ad break for everyone else too. I mean, a three minute break. I'll be right back. <laughs> 